Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, episode number 230. Mark Sargent is here standing by and I'm Patricia Steer. I'm going to play the jukebox. I'm going to play a song my grandfather Howard Steer wrote and I think it was in the 50s or late 40s. It's totally awful, totally cheesy. And once I started, I can't turn it off unless I pull the jukebox away from the wall and pull the plug out from behind it, which I'm not going to do. So do your own thing for three minutes or listen to the cheesy lyrics about a radio station called WKMI in Kalamazoo, Michigan that my grandfather owned, that my father took over, that he sold in the 80s. I think it plays Rush Limbaugh now, so I disavow all association with that radio station. It's the only song I can play on my jukebox without getting a copyright strike because... It's a family song. So here we go. I hope I picked the right song. <laughs> it's by the Melody Laners, which is the street the station was on. Hopefully you can hear it. Oh my God, this isn't even the right song. <laughs> Hold on. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> Sorry. I played a Frank Sinatra song. I thought I hit the right numbers. I don't think you're going to be copyrighted. So don't worry about that. It's a B side of a Frank Sinatra song. Oh, well, another show, another time. Sorry. I was all excited about doing that. I receive emails all the time. Does it work? Will you play? And I figured that would be fun to open with today. But. I feel sad. And I tried plugging it back in and it continued playing that song. So yeah, it's not like a computer. It doesn't no. <laughs> reset. It so there's is. nothing I can do at all except start to hang out over and pretend this never happened. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> it's like it's like unplugging a drill and then plugging it back in. <laughs> right. It's still going to work. Oh, well, I have had a great. Now the cats are going back there. Rory. <laughs> um. I had a great day. I was out in the sun in my little, you know, garden situation in the back of my house. And I got a little bit of, got a little pink in my cheeks, a little, little sunburn here, kind of not that great. But yeah, it's, it's really warm here in Houston, Texas. What about where you are? Is it getting warm in uh, the it, Seattle area? It is warm in the Seattle area. It is nice. It's a nice change. We appreciate it more here than in most places because we have 220 overcast days a year. Is that how many? Yeah, and there's a word for that many overcast days a year. Um, I think the meteorological term is suicidal. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's true because if you don't, you have a seasonal affective disorder. Sad if you don't get enough sun. Right. I actually yeah. like unless, unless, cloudy unless, weather. If you grow up here, it's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. if, if you're born and raised here, but if you're transplanted here from somewhere else, especially down south, oh yeah, you do not want to hang out here very much. I'm not meant to be with my skin tone in. Um, really hot environments like Houston, Texas, or Florida, where I lived at one point in my life when I was pretty young. At least I don't it was like hot weather. Why do I live here? <laughs> at, least, at least Florida was humid, better for your skin. Yeah, that is true. And I also lived in Louisiana in New Orleans, and that was really brutally hot too. Right. Um, you know, I like, I don't mind clouds. I don't mind rain at all. I think it's, um, I don't know, it's cozy, I guess. But then again, you know what? If I had a choice between warm or cold i would definitely pick warm weather right. boy we're boring if we've re been reduced to talking about the weather no i'm I, i'm <laughs> way ahead of you i got something in my hand that's kind of interesting what is what it, is it? <gasps> it's the hot docs pass oh i've got mine too i already stored it away in my little flat earth file folder with uh with my badge from the flat earth uh, international conference in raleigh north carolina i'm gonna keep uh keep those badges because they're very lovely keepsakes for the future yeah, I, this is, yeah, normally I'd put this in my hope chest. Totally. Hope chest. <laughs> what are you hoping for? <laughs> no, that's what they called them. 
I remember. I totally yeah, remember. And normally, I know. Normally, women do it when you know before they get married. It's like, oh, you know, my- like as a teenager, your mom hopes starts and, putting stuff away dreams. for you. Yeah. There, like things you'll need when you get married, like a an axe, um, <laughs> <laughs> hypodermics. <laughs> you know the usual stuff. Instruction yeah. manual on exotic <laughs> poisons. The yeah. uh, uh, no, no. So this is the hot dogs 25th anniversary thing, and as you know, Mark Sargent guest subject. Because you were either a filmmaker or, in rare cases, you were a subject that was actually there. Which I didn't me... see any other subjects wandering around aside from I us. I know. We were the lab rats, basically. Because yeah, <laughs> that's what the, basically this thing says. It's like, oh, no, no, you're not a filmmaker. You were one of the, one of the people in there. Yeah. And we'll talk about the film in a bit. But I have to get this out of the way first. Mm-hmm. Which is the, uh, the unpleasantness. Which is, look. Okay, so we everybody knows that we went because we've been talking about it for weeks and weeks that we went to the Hot Docs Film Festival in Toronto, Patricia and I, to see the premiere of Behind the Curve. Well, correction, we didn't see the premiere. We didn't go on premiere day because we had well, a cutter meetup. How's that? But for us, uh, you know, we went a couple of days after the first showing. So. And we had an exclusive showing inside the filmmaker's apartment slash hotel room mm-hmm. slash whatever you want to call it. By ourselves, so we could talk By among ourselves. Us. I know. I wish. I wish they were there with us. I. I know. It's like no, no. You got to watch it. It's, I. I wish they were with us because I think. It I don't. I'm glad we saw it without anybody there because I would have wanted to ask questions the whole way through and it wouldn't have got the overall feeling that a viewer in a theater would have got, which I think right. just us sitting next to each other definitely got on the first viewing. Right. So we, we we'll talk about it in a minute, but it was the only chance to see it this last weekend in Toronto and we saw it uh, once in there and once in the theater. It was shown three times and the last one was actually just a few days ago, Sunday. And somebody snuck in and shot part of the movie with their cell phone. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I don't know who. Yeah, don't know who. I have a good uh, idea who, but it's been passed around to a couple different people and I received that in an email and then, you know, it it made the rounds. They only got about half of the movie because the ushers were doing their job and kept this guy under under the radar for a while. So the first part's missing, the last part's missing, it's shot in black and white, it's shot from the side, the audio is terrible. In fact, I have a friend who was is stationed in Iraq and you know where they get a lot of bootleg things and he said mm-hmm. it's probably the worst bootleg he's ever seen <laughs> also a big hunk of the middle is missing. oh yeah yeah the guy and, can turn uh, it off turn it on and, and yeah Chris and Pontius a uh, flat earth model builder had a whole part devoted just to him amazing to watch him you build these flat earth models right. but that's just totally gone but it's not because the person recording it meant to have that happen or other parts that were taken out it was probably just like oh here comes somebody stop recording oh they're gone start recording and then they spliced it together if anybody sees this there's at least 40 minutes missing and i mentioned on last night strange world let me give this away you didn't see the ending everybody dies i know right (laughs) it that's how uh, the great movies that's really good it comes down to uh popcorn popcorn happy ending or tragic award winner spoiler alert so uh yeah so and i made the mistake last night in strange world of actually mentioning that there were people that already had it up on their websites and that they were distributing it and as you know that is a no, no, you're not supposed to do that, especially since the film has not technically even been released yet. Correct. So a letter I must read, a couple paragraphs from the producers of the movie. And this is not their idea. This is mine. Uh, I got to get this out. To read it, you mean? Or the writing? Uh, yeah, you to, wrote it. to read it. No, no, no. I didn't tell it. No, no. To read it. She yeah. didn't ask me to read it. Uh, this is from producer. Hi, Mark. We are aware of the excitement surrounding Behind the Curve and know that many people would like to see the film. We appreciate your support of the film in interviews and various posts, but we kindly ask that you not encourage the illegal downloading and re-hosting of our film on various channels and websites. The film is copyrighted and is not publicly available at this time. As a result, We will pursue legal action against anyone who posts or shares the illegally recorded version of our film. We must do this in order to retain our rights to the film and maintain its privacy. That said, the film is will be publicly available in the future. Underlined. Smiley face and hearts, too. That's weird. 
Uh, no. Probably nothing. The uh, uh, Everyone who wants to see it will have the opportunity to do so at that time. Unfortunately, in the meantime, there is a small window of time where some people have seen it and some have not. We will let you know as soon as we have a release date. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, okay, so, well, it's their film. They can... Um, yeah, 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 it is. And that, they haven't sold it yet, so they, it's kind of a big deal. Now, they're, they're, in, they're in, uh, technically, they're in no jeopardy because really, this thing, the thing that was released as the bootleg is really kind of a... It's not even in color, and it was... No, it's not even in color. color. It's it's kind of like a, a, like a, a weird... It's a taste. Yeah, it's like a teaser trailer that runs about four. Or like five, film noir in a way. <laughs> yeah, it is. It it doesn't really do the the full film justice. I do not encourage anyone to download it. Really, I I know you should wait. I know some of you are like, no, I got to see it. I got to see it. And the community is going to pass it around. I get it, but it is not the whole film. That being said, what has been passed around, from what we can tell, from people that you know in our circles, have liked it. Yeah, everyone's liked it. That's seen it. Yeah, so great. Well, Wonderful. that's not true. Uh, um, I, I I heard a report from somebody that went on the very last day, and they messaged me back on Skype and said that, you know, they didn't see it at all as a hit piece, but they said it did show Flat Earth in a light in which we are um, holding on to a belief even when proven wrong by globe believers. No, no, I mean the boot, the bootleg version. Well, well yeah, they we, yeah. they saw the real film, and that's what yeah. they said. Yeah. So, um but they said it wasn't a, was not a hit piece. Well, we know it wasn't a hit piece. It wasn't crafted to destroy flat earth, right. but it's a behind the scenes. Look at the people, some of the people who happen to be flat earthers and how we get along, how we don't get along and what it was like in 2017 on this flat earth. That's, yeah. it. That's what it I, is. I enjoyed it. I know we're not going to talk about this too long. Oh yeah. We've, we've it, beat it to death. We beat it to death in Globusters. Uh, if, if you're coming in late and you don't know what we're talking about, it was a movie, what Patricia was saying about the people of Flat Earth in 2017. The people in the spotlight were uh, myself, Patricia, Bob and Cammie, Nathan Thompson, Chris Pontius, Jaron, I think that was it, six of them. Well, mm -hmm. seven people, including And Cameron. a ton of other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Four Four or five meetups, to a meetup in Los Angeles, a meetup in Pasadena, uh, outside of your meetup in Houston, uh, inside a meetup in Denver and Fort Collins with Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, just about everybody you can think of in the Flat Earth community was shown uh, even in a, at a glance. I mean, and it, even a couple of people like I saw um, on my watching the bootleg, I noticed, oh, Nicole Cote was shot right off YouTube uh, right. very quickly. Um, Karen of the Sun and Moon Group shot off her YouTube channel just right. really quickly, a, a flash of her face. Dell right. of Beyond Del. the Imaginary oh, Curve, yeah. just a couple of seconds of him doing street activism. So I think the filmmakers tried to get a wide array of people just to show there's more than just these several people they were following. So, right. Anyway, so, yeah. someday we'll be able to all see it. I wish I would have received a copy of it. I would have liked to see it again. Yeah. We, I am sure we will in the future, and I have high hopes in the producers and the salespeople that are that are involved in this thing. I, you and I both saw it twice, and I loved it. I, I thought it was a great representation of the community. From, remember, it is a mainstream piece for the mainstream media, and yeah. that's what it's, that's what it's for. I would be proud, regardless if I was in it or not. I would be proud to show this to the average person on the street who knew nothing about flat earth it was entertaining that's for sure it yeah. kept people watching and interested in the people um and in the end even if flat earth wasn't proven there was some evidence given and also the spirit of the people showed that there's something more to this than just a bunch of tinfoil hat wearers living in their mother's right. basement and right. even the people who were anti-flat earth the scientists and the uh, therapists psychologists i think were saying these people are intelligent so um you know whatever you happen to think about it it's just one of many things that will be coming out about flat earth in the in the future it's just one little drop in the proverbial bucket it's not the be all end all and it's not the end of the world right. so there's no really uh, there's no need to worry about it flat earth can't be destroyed even if this was a hit piece flat earth is here to stay and um nothing is going to make it go away because you can't make truth go away Agreed. And my my final thing on this, and of course, anyone can ask any questions they want to me about privately, public can call, ask, call and ask anything you want, is that if you want more information on the film, the latest up to date information, you can just go to beyond, I'm sorry, behind the curve film dot com. All right. Well, we've wrapped that up. Yep. Um, 
you know what? I have this. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I've had this whole list of stuff I was going to say that we were going to talk about because of the jukebox failure at the beginning of the show. Do I... you want me to go over the list of stuff? Well, I, have um, it I know we're going to be talking about bookies. We're going to yeah. talk about billboards, meetups, the UK convention. And um, oh, and I also want to say happy birthday to Karen B. It is her birthday today, which is May 9th. Um, and it's also my brother's birthday, Timothy Steer, living in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. I know he doesn't listen to the show. He's not a flat earther, but uh, I'm probably going to be going to see him perhaps next month. And maybe I'll be able to um, film him, do like a little live hangout. He might not want to be involved with a flat earth channel, but maybe just some kind of a personal I don't know something 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 so. happy birthday to karen from me uh you know can't, if you don't know who she is karen b how could you not know who karen b is i know right world-renowned physicist cyclist and author <laughs> what yeah yeah it's true <laughs> all right the, uh uh what do you want to talk about next you want to talk about the uk convention which was happening while we were in toronto by the way toronto beautiful city i'd never oh been my there gosh. so nice um, it was, the people were great. The place we stayed on Airbnb just happened to be perfect where we could just walk to the hot dogs, uh, film festival. I think it was called the TIFF theater, almost right across the street. Yeah. Great restaurants everywhere. People walking, people happy. The weather was fabulous while we were there. And for me, the biggest treat of all, aside from seeing the documentary and meeting up with fellow flat earthers at Pong Ping Pong Bar, which we'll talk about in a second, yeah. um, and meeting uh, a, a person who's followed our, both of our channels for quite some time, Brian Ezrin, who came and took us out to dinner at one point, yeah. um, was going atop the CN Tower, which we've all seen pictures of. I use it as the uh, the thumbnail for this video. Uh, very space agey, very 70s looking. It's like the space needle on crack. <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's yeah. very, 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 very tall. It's taller than the Empire State Building. And we got to go up, not all the way to the top, but pretty far up. Um, and we got to view sunset over Lake Ontario. And guess what? It's flat. But we already knew that. But really beautiful scenery, especially yeah. from way up high. And I know it's touristy and I don't like doing I don't like doing touristy things, but this was a way to get up high and get a great view. And watching the sunset was nice. And it was and we, we went without the lot. Yeah, we went without the lines. We went fairly late, and the place thing was already being lit up. And it was a close walk because our our place, which was pretty high up itself, I think we were what on the forty second floor of the, yeah. the building we were on. Really tall. And and we could, you know, the CN Tower was literally, you know, out and just look to your right outside our balcony, and there it was. And the it was it was fantastic. I loved going up in that thing because I hadn't been up in the Space Needle in years. And it's and it, it looks back backwards towards the city and it, you know from the water's edge and it's great and it sits right above the aquarium, which is run by Ripley's, believe it or not. And we did not go to the aquarium. I don't like aquariums in general, I know. and I know. my reasons have a lot to do with being vegan. So yeah. um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Those okay. who know why know why. Those who don't care don't care. Do your do your life. I'll do me. <laughs> yeah, see, it just made me hungry. So <laughs> that's sad. No, well, I'm kidding. I want to give a shout out to Spin Ping Pong Bar in Toronto on King Street West. What a great place that is. It's yeah. sort of underground, like in a basement area. But what a wonderful place. Ping Pong is so fun. Um, you know, it, it reminded me of the 70s. It reminded me of being at your parents' house, if you're as old as Mark and I anyway, where everyone had a ping pong bar in their basement or in a, you know, the rec room. And it was just one of those kind of things that we did was play ping pong. And, yeah. you know, I don't know, in my family, we would do things that my mother wouldn't really let us do if she were watching. Let's just put it that way in the, in the basement rec room. So quite a few people showed up and oh, yeah. at least half of them left us to go to the movie that night, which we yes. weren't allowed. Well, we, I should say we weren't allowed. We were discouraged by the producers. They wanted to make sure we saw it first by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And they went and we stayed there and it was great. We, I had a blast with those guys. Yeah. And uh, we want to say hello to Bronca, who lives pretty far away from where Hot Docs was shown in. Two the, hours north. Yeah, Entertainment District of Toronto. But she drove all the way and took Mark and I out to a really lovely cafe. And we that was before uh, before the whole uh, ping pong thing. Yeah. And uh, Rob Morrill saying, table tennis, damn it. True, true. We've got table to speak tennis. for our UK friends as well. Table tennis. Um, ping pong. 
I don't know which sounds better to you. Well, to me, ping table pong. tennis or ping pong. No, let's not get into the the British versus American pronunciation of things. We'll be here all day. Yeah, that's true. Bonnet Ad, or hood. Um, aluminium. I love the word aluminium. The way herbs they say it in the UK. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But um, herbs, herbs, right, right. Mm. There's so many. Um. Anyway, you say potato. I say potato because <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> We say fries, they say chips. <laughs> that is true. And yeah. um, their chips that we call like potato chips, they call them crisps. Yeah. I'm confused. I yeah, know. <laughs> I would just be lost over there. So it, that was a lot of fun. Bronco was great. Just a ball of enthusiasm. She Loved made her. these incredible bottles. She hand paints and draws these bottles. They're, well, they're just regular bottles. And she overlays them with something and puts wonderful decor on them and um i don't know i just she gave one uh, to you mark and gave two to me yeah. uh, with cats on mine and just and really, i got cookies yeah was, i got yes. homemade cookies yeah. so many nice people there came out to um to meet and greet uh, and had fun at the ping pong place and just toronto was overall an awesome experience yeah. i love canada and Brian was probably the best. Brian Ezrin, which people, Brian people don't Ezrin know Brian. Called, Brian. Brian Ezrin from Mississauga, Canada, uh, which is south. It's halfway between Toronto and Niagara Falls. And he gave us a little tour as we were, because he wanted to take us to a little dinner place called the Pickle Barrel. Pickle Barrel. That was the Pickle plan. Barrel. He said and, to me, there's lots of vegan things. And he was very yeah. looking at, very nice to look out for me, although I can find food anywhere, but he really wanted to make sure I was happy. What a nice friend. Yeah, we were not going to get lost while we were with him. That is That's absolutely true. for sure. He went on the, uh, the, the subway with us. Yeah, the Toronto subway. There and back. The subway was really clean. Everything was so convenient. And I know that every city has negatives, but we didn't see negatives while we were there. No, positives. Toronto. Again, up until I had gone there to this thing, the only things I knew about Toronto, I learned from Scott Pilgrim versus the world, hmm. the movie. It was very safe there too, it felt. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's, it's Canada. Well, you know, bad things happen everywhere and great things. Uh, not a lot of bad things happen in Canada. It's really? Pretty, Michael, Michael Moore, part of his documentary, and that was years ago, where he, he was testing out, do Canadians leave their doors open? A lot of the times they do. Well, one time when you were here, when I went from my house, in there's a door that leads to the garage. I lock that door. And you said, why do you lock that door? You've got the garage door. And I said, I don't know. It's just an extra measure of security. The, For you, because same, you live on an island. Yeah, same sort of. A, dumb. Yeah, but to me, not, it's like, well, I live in a city. I'm going to lock it. Yeah, not just an island, an island that is really close. I mean, I we can see Canada from you know right up the road here, and you know uh, Vancouver Island, and it's very similar attitudes when you're on the islands because look, you're on an island. Wait, if you, you if, if you're if you're making trouble on the island, you're not going to fit in very long. Makes it sound like a cult, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of. One of us. <laughs> One of us. Uh, I do want to shout out a meetup coming up, uh, Vancouver Island, May 12th, and you've done a I just did uh, that video on promo. it, and it's like, on your channel since we're talking yeah. Canada. I went to that one before. That's their, oh crap, I didn't put a second, that's all right. Uh, that's their second one in that location. I went to the first one. So if you want to find out more about it, and you live in or around Vancouver, check Mark Sargent's channel. No, 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 no not Vancouver. It's not a Vancouver meetup? Well, it's Vancouver Island. The Vancouver Island. I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't, yeah. No, that's confusing. Everybody makes a mistake. I'm confused. There's Vancouver, the city, which is just north of Interstate 5, uh, north of Seattle. And then there's Vancouver Island, which is a large island just west of Vancouver. So and, and uh, so Victoria is in on Vac Vancouver Island. That's kind of confusing. You're right. I know. Uh, hey, look, it's Canada. Am I well, there's something that's like why that I, in that's New that's Orleans, why the, too. The theme song for that particular trailer, I used Blame Canada, which was oh. written by Gary Parker for the South Park movie and sung at the Academy Awards by the late Robin Williams. Yep. You know a little bit of everything, don't you? Yeah, pretty much. And you're not afraid to tell us, are you? It's amazing I can actually <laughs> sleep. I'm trying to find uh, something here on my phone about. that I said I was going to talk about before. But How about the UK conference while oh, we were yeah. up in Toronto? 
Yeah. So we're we're up in Toronto, and it's <laughs> not it's not it's not a slam in any way, shape, or form because you know we're busy. We're doing a lot of stuff there. We, I mean, we were even though we had some supposedly had some downtime, we seemed always to be doing something. And next thing I you know because we're and the um I, I I don't have a laptop. I should probably pick up one because I use a I use a tower, and the room the the Airbnb came with a tablet. So I'm I'm looking through headlines and stuff. And I see this wave of headlines coming out of the UK because even though they did well, look at the, the, the debate they had against the physicists that and went really I was well. uh, watching it on D Mar I think D Marble uploaded it. Oh. I think, and it was really interesting. Yeah, it was you can interesting. see it many it places, but it was really good. Did the media pick up on that? No, they did not. No. What did they focus on? We know they, what the media does. Eh, they Anything focused on whatever fun. seems the most outrageous and mm -hmm. eye catching in this case was Darren Nesbitt's map, which they affectionately called the Pac Man map. And because you can look up Pac Man graphics anywhere, there must have been about 45 articles. Well, why so. didn't they make fun of, and I'm not saying anyone should, okay? I'm just saying, why didn't the media who doesn't know anything about anything make fun of the cosmic egg? Uh, well, I guess because uh, that's secondary. If, Dar if had Darren not been there, they absolutely would have gone after the egg. Absolutely would have gone after mm -hmm. um, Martin Kenny. Is that his name? Martin yes, Kenny? yes. The thing uh, is, after that at a at a convention or conference, when you have speakers that are there to present their own ideas, um, they each presented their own idea, and then the media says all flat earthers believe that uh, a Pac Man model. Some do, right, some right, don't. Right. And from that, they also, the, the secondary one, I they didn't even have a chance to get to the egg because the secondary one was that flat earthers don't believe in Australia. Oh, I heard that. In fact, that a friend like, of mine, it's like a friend of mine who he actually is an ex-boyfriend. Um, he told me that his wife saw something like that, that flat earthers don't believe, don't in, believe Australia. in Australia. And yeah. she knows me too. So she told him and he told me and I said, what? Yeah. Where did that even yeah. come from? I don't know. I don't. I've know. never found. I tried to figure out. Well, who said that? You Is there someone who said that? You got to be careful with the media. That's all I can tell you. And then, of course, on top of that, if that wasn't enough, next thing you know, uh, Gary and Darren and Martin, all three of them, get on a very popular morning talk show in England, and they go toe to toe with the hosts about the whole flat earth thing i'm glad there were three of them there you know at least they had the odds in their favor and i, I think it went okay but yeah well, point is you can't you can't control the media all you can do is sort of aim them in a certain direction and hope to god they look at the right or look at the thing that you want them to look at so but the conference did get a lot of a lot of press despite yes. the fact that they were trying to minimize the press exposure the, it's really changed nowadays, and you and I have spoken about this several times, and that is you only need one story to come out because the rest of the media now, they just copy off each other. They're not they're not even, I, I don't know if there's an agreement where nobody sues anybody. They just grab the headline and, and they'll say, oh, as long as they say, oh, yeah, initially reported by such and such. And then they just run that story. Well, so, we've all seen those videos where... Um, it the where all the media is reporting the same story that they get from the wire service and they're all reading right. about the easter bunny or you know all over oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere and yeah that's what they do well that that is usually just straight off of the ap mm -hmm. this is voluntary people are just again media laziness i think maybe easy it's like i don't want to look anything up i'm just going to grab this story and paste it and give them a byline and whatever I, but so anyway it, it was a, a great success though the uk conference went over well and I was happy for everybody involved. Uh, I'm sure if they had to do some things different like we did over in the States, I'm sure they would have done it. But yeah, and every new thing, there's a new um, learning, learning, not learning curve, really. But every lessons, time you do lessons something, you learn learned. lessons, and then yeah. you're better next time. Uh, yeah. Even when I was watching the um, uh, Behind the Curve documentary, they shot so much footage of me and you and Bob and everybody. Right. But they only use some of it, and you don't really know how it's all going to come together. And when you watch right. yourself, you're like, why didn't I say that? Why didn't I say that? Or I did say something good, but they didn't put it in. So you just have to learn that um, they can take everything out of context, but they can really take things out of context in no, the behind no, the curve. I, but 
<laughs> the media will take meetups out of context if they happen to attend one. They'll take uh, conventions or conferences out of context because they want something that's going to catch the eye of John Q. Public or Jane Doe and make them read or, or pay for what they're putting out. And it ha they can't just say, Flat Earthers met up and it was very interesting. No one's going to want to watch that or read that. They want to hear something weird like Pac-Man. They do. And you, you shoot 100 hours of footage and you've got to condense it down to 100 minutes. And plus you have to cover six people, four meetups, a conference, the opposing side, and some animations thrown in. So that's a tight little film. There was a lot happening in this thing mm -hmm. where there was not, in my opinion, not a dull moment. I mean, you were just, you know, considering the on the shoestring budget they were on, it was it was popping. It was it was very polished, in my opinion. I think I, so I love the animations. I don't know who that guy was that they used for animations. That guy. They animated you. <laughs> oh, my God. They didn't animate a lot of people. I'm glad they didn't animate me. <laughs> I, I don't know why my eyebrows were so blonde in the animation. I get it. I, I you know. People have said, "Well, you know, do you highlight your eyebrows?" No, I don't. I'm now nowadays. I think they're more gray than blonde, but whatever. It's there's funny. Only, um, there's only two people that are animated, though, that I know of. I think it's funny because they shot me over such a long period of time. When I watched it, it looked like I'm a different person in every shot. Almost. I mean, in one shot, I've got blonde eyebrows and red eyebrows in the next. Well, because of makeup, or my hair's up, mm. or my hair's shorter, or my hair's longer. It's like who it. But that's me. I change my you look also all the use time. Different styles of clothing, yeah. <laughs> whereas pretty much in one reviewer said the only things I own are black t shirts and shorts and a hat. Yeah. So, but I enjoyed it overall, aside from, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. But I, I want to say hello to Flat Earth Head, the channel Flat Earth Head, and encourage you to subscribe. Uh, there is a Louisiana meetup coming up Saturday, May 12th in Mandeville, Louisiana. I've been to Mandeville before, so I want to say a uh, shout out for that. So go to Flat Earth Head's channel and check it out if you live in the Louisiana area. You've been to Louisiana area. If you live near Mandeville um, in Louisiana. Um, and Joey Sylvie also asked, he's in the live chat for us to mention that. So, yeah. Hmm. And I, uh, I mentioned earlier that my, my brother lives in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I might be going, there's a concert coming up there. There's two that are coming up there and I might end up heading over there to go see, um, go see those. One is the English beats and the other is, oh, my brain, I can't think right now. Anyway, something else. So. It's not that mm -hmm. far from here. I could fly or drive, but I haven't seen my brother in a while. And it's my brother's birthday today. So, hey, might as well. Oh, that's nice. Might as well mention it. Yeah. Little Timmy Steer, not so little anymore. He's the youngest one in my, of the three kids. I'm the eldest. Also, I have to mention, sorry, jumping back to the UK thing real quick. If you guys missed any of the UK conference and you want to know what we're talking about, the television interview between... Philip, the host of The Morning Show, I think it's just literally called The Morning. You can catch that. It's literally one of the top five videos on YouTube. Type in Flat Earth. You'll see him and Darren Nesbitt in the thumbnail. The title is called Philip is Absolutely Baffled by the Men Who Believe the Earth is Flat. So, and it's seven minutes long. Decent sized segment. Hey, they got on there. Any publicity? I'm absolutely baffled that people think the earth is a globe <laughs> really <laughs> uh, conditioning i can't i can't judge people not now i mean we were all there you would have been the same i again people have heard me say it a thousand times how can i judge anyone when i was in their shoes three years ago how can i do it i would have i would have left you out of the room too yeah probably probably um you know like the expression when pigs fly my dad used to say that Probably pigs can fly at this point with all the things that we've found out are true that we always thought in the past were jokes or totally ridiculous. Uh, so be snowballs on the lookout for flying pigs near you anytime now. Snowball's chance in hell uh, <laughs> or the proverbial that'll be the day. Oh, you know, I've got a funny snowball story unrelated to flat earth as most of my stories are. When I was young and lived in Michigan, my mother and father would always have holiday parties and invite lots of people. And one of their best parties was 4th of July because we lived on a lake and we had a big sloping backyard that went down to where the pool was and then down to where the lake was. And then you could look over the lake and quite close was the country club where they shot off awesome fireworks. So they'd have parties for the 4th of July pool party, boat party. And then of course at night, everyone would watch the fireworks. Well, my mother had this idea 
to um, kind of play a practical joke on my dad, who was more the practical joker, but she thought way ahead of time. And during winter, she went outside in Michigan and made some snowballs and put them in plastic wrap or Tupperware, I have no idea, in the freezer and kept them. And her plan was when they had the 4th of July party, she was going to throw snowballs at my dad. Well, they turned out to be ice balls and almost knocked him out. So. Yeah, snowballs, you can't do that. <laughs> Snowball chance Anyone, in hell. <laughs> yeah, made snowballs, me think if you put them in the freezer, they will... Uh, yeah. They'll just ice sweet, off. It was a sweet thought my mom had. Yeah, as she gives him a concussion, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> TKO. You'll, you'll put your eye out. <laughs> wow. Uh, did you see the article or did anyone see it in Metro News? The title is, Bookies Refuse to Accept Flat Earthers Bad About Whether Our Planet is Disc Shaped. Uh, they think I... this disc word. But Poncho Pete is right in the front, right in the, in the article, his picture, along with Jez Gallisher or Gallagher. I think it's Gallisher. They're both from Grimsby. Grimsby. I know that Poncho Pete is. And it, there's a picture of them looking on a laptop computer and holding the laptop computer up toward the person from the paper who's taking the photo. Uh, kind of I, funny faces. I, did, I did see that. And I was going to read the first couple paragraphs of the article because it, it transitioned all, all the way over to Newsweek over here in the States. There's a lot of it's it's getting traction because it's it's, it's another one of those things where this, uh, you know, paper takes it and then it it, you know, everyone copies the same story like yeah, we were talking yeah. about before. But it was great to see Pancho Pete's picture there. Yeah, Pancho Pete, uh, as you know, Flattia Award winner. Exactly. 2017. I <laughs> uh, have to note that because I know he does from time to time. The uh, Yes, and, it's the thumbnail for every one of his videos lately. <laughs> the, the beginning of the article goes a little, little like this. A British man cannot find a bookmaker to take his bet the, that the earth is flat, arguing the companies won't entertain his gamble because... They know he'll win. Gerard Gallagher from the UK's northeastern port town of Grinsby has already been turned down by a host of well-known betting companies who say his request is not a valid one, according to the Grinsby Telegraph. Gallagher said he is confident he could win big if only someone would take the bet. I think the reason that they won't accept my bet is because they know that I am right in saying that the earth is flat, he told te to Telegraph. And if other people join me in placing the bet, they could lose millions. And uh, the father said he's happy to be proved wrong and that if the betting companies were so sure the earth was round, they should take the bet. It's just easy money for them. And he was trying to place 100 pound bets. That's about 135 bucks several times and couldn't they wouldn't let him do it. I thought it was more interesting that he knew bookies. Well, it's that, different than here in the US. In the UK, and I've been to many different places in the UK, primarily Scotland, England quite a few times too, but they have these places, they're, they're, they're you know, in, they're everywhere. One of the names of one of the bookies is William Hill. And you just go inside and there's bookies in there. It's totally legit, totally legal to do it. It's like another, like on any other business. It's, it's not, um, I don't know. It's not super, sh it's not super above board. You kind of have a feeling when you go really in them that it's a little bit. Cause it's sketchy. run by Jimmy the knife and Tommy two know. fingers. And yeah. But I did go. Fat Mike. With, <laughs> I did go with my ex Scottish boyfriend who lives here in Houston. I mentioned earlier, who's married anyway, he, um, wasn't married when we were together. He's married after we broke up. Sure. Right? Just get that straight. Yeah, all right, all right. Keep going. <laughs> and I know his wife. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, he would go in and make a bet. His dad or him would bet on horse racing. So I don't know if that's big in Scotland or or what, what but they'd make bets on horse racing. Hmm. So people do it. Yeah. I guess it's legal. Anyway, it's, it's a good angle. It's a good story. I love it. I think it's I if it gets more traction, fantastic. It's a it's a cool little thing. It's like wait, because again, why won't they take the bet? People bookies mm -hmm. will take bets on everything. Oh yeah, and well, in this article, it goes on to say something about Elvis and bets on Elvis being alive and such that were right. William Hill dealt with in the past. Nathan Oakley, who knows because he lives in the Leamington Spa area of England, says it's not shady in bookies. Uh, it's like Vegas, and he says yes, the races are big here, so. Uh, Mr. Manny Moses says more money is made on sports betting than the sports themselves. It's a shame. Oh, heck, you don't get me started there. The whole fantasy football league. The fantasy football league generates as much money as the actual, especially in American football, as much as the NFL itself. 
You know, the fact that Pancho Pete got in the paper and got this to spread around the globe, joke, yeah. around the flat earth, is props to him. He found an unusual angle to get the flat earth story talked about. And really all we want, even if people laugh, is to get the flat earth story talked about. Because, hey, like we said before, we all laughed when we heard about it, or at least we thought that can't be true. And now look where we are now. So. You know, it doesn't really surprise me with him. <laughs> well, anyone well. could anyone could do it over there. He could do it. Yeah. Yeah. He found he found a way. It's yep. like, hey man, <laughs> frame that thing. <laughs> Take screenshots. Well, and it's on the internet forever. You know, it goes into the archives and yeah. he can show it to his friends. And it's a good picture of him on the cover of the Oh, he should have he should have held up the Flatty Award while he was <laughs> while they took a picture of him. Uh, I would like to say hello to everyone in the live chat, including Nora, no one's flower. And uh, Nora uh, lives in, uh, well, she's an American, but happens to live in Ireland now and has red hair like me. And we've met before twice in Leamington Spa. And also we've met in the UK and also oh, three times and at the uh, Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina. Wow, Nora, we've seen each other a lot. Anyway, Nora, who goes by the channel, no one's flower channel name, says that there in Ireland, they have something called Patty Powers Bookies. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Carly Sunshine is here, and um, Carly says, Flat Earth, so hot right now. <laughs> it's true. Anyone knows that movie reference, go ahead, call it out. Uh, Martin okay. Liebke is here, Flat Earth British, who was a star at the Flat Earth convention. And uh, his channel is just amazing. So if you have not yet subscribed to Martin Liebke, you want interesting looks into history not the history that you've learned about, but what could be ha perhaps be the true history. Check out Martin's channel. He dives deep. Um, who else is here? Oh, uh, Sleeping Warrior is here too, Anthony Riley. And he has been doing some good work uh, using a P900 camera, looking at things he shouldn't be able to see. Um, I don't mean women in rooms with the curtains open. I mean, <laughs> farther than what he's supposed to be able to see if, uh, you know, if you lived on a globe. Hello to Lucy Lemons, who's in our live chat. And she also called into TFR last night, Truth Frequency Radio, your Tuesday night show, Mark. Because? Because she likes you. She's nice. Uh, and there's a meetup coming there up. There you go. <laughs> meetup. And, uh, well, yeah, she likes me. Uh, but no, there's a meetup in Palmdale, California coming up. Mm -hmm. And I... Uh, should be a lot of fun. And the next meetup in Los Angeles, I am going to be attending. Just so I want to go. Why don't you go? When is it? Uh, June. Um, Second week of June, maybe. I don't have too the much. Reason, the reason why I'm going, you're probably saying, hey, Mark, why are you oh, going? I should be asking that. Hey, Mark, yeah. why are you going? <laughs> I forgot uh, my. Uh, oh, Patricia, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you asked. The reason why I am going is because National Geographic contacted me and said, hey, we'd like to shoot some sort of mini documentary thing, blah, 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 down in the California area. Do you know if anything's going on? And I said, yes. I, I said, there's uh, Ross and Carrie. Is it Carrie and Ross? Uh, Ross and Carrie? Oh, no, Ross and Carrie, right? I think that's their name. I think that's the name. It, either way, the uh, I did an interview with them, and he's part of a skeptic society, and so he wants to run some tests at a salt lake that's outside of Los Angeles. What's a skeptic society? I think it seems like a they bunch don't believe of in anything ever. Who feel they're smarter than everybody else and no. gather together and lord it over other people and be no no i don't think they're they no. necessarily think they're more intelligent i think well i mean yeah there is that but they also think that everything is absolutely as advertised there is no everything's really really well, cut that's, and not, dry. that's not a skeptic actually is it? it might be a little naive that's a opinion. that's or, just somebody who opens their mouth up and lets um you know the power should not be put uh, a spoonful of lies in their mouth I'll, I'll call them out on it, but it is naive to think it's like, okay, so so there are conspiracies in business and politics and entertainment and sports. We all know that. You know, uh, you, even they, among two people, there can be a conspiracy. Oh, yeah, there's and little conspiracies. Talk this and make up some plot to take down Nathan Oak. What, <laughs> what they're saying is the only conspiracies that are real are the ones that are told, that are covered by the media. The mainstream media, it's like, uh, yeah, but you're assuming that the mainstream media is completely objective and is not leaned by any corporate 
interests whatsoever and they can look in to see who owns the mainstream media i know, find I out know. it's a handful of companies yeah mainstream media is controlled by parent corporations and if they don't want certain things talked about they don't get talked about so if some conspiracy happens that's under their umbrella and it doesn't happen and someone says well that happened it's like well i didn't see it on television so it didn't happen it's oof, that bugs me anyway the point is this skeptic society down in los angeles they want to run a test at some salt lake and they asked me to come down i said no i'm not coming down for a freaking skeptics test there's there's plenty of people in los angeles area you don't need me to come down and so i contacted some people down there and then national geographic contacts me and they said hey maybe they do a meetup at the same time so then i started being the go-between shooting emails around to everybody and then they finally called me up and said why don't you come down we'll we'll, we'll bring you down to this and and you know we'll turn this into kind of a, a bigger thing it's like okay fine i will go and we will do a meetup sometime in june and we will do the skeptics thing and it'll be flat earthers versus the skeptic society and many skeptics will die <laughs> you heard it here first <laughs> <laughs> it'll be it'll there will be blood not mm -hmm. the movie the 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 actual flat earth debunking test well um we have a little bit of a, a bit of drama going on in our live chat and i have to mention it we do yes what is it i don't look at the live chat yeah, I, I I do occasionally. I've managed to be able to put it on my screen. I used to look at it on my phone, and then I look like I wasn't paying attention to you. I, I'm not, but because I was always looking down. <laughs> now I can she look right at my really screen. She doesn't pay much attention to me. What? Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> All right. The drama is a number of people are saying that they don't like your flashing mic, that it's distracting, it's the Death Star, get rid of it, and people are voting. However, other people are saying, I love it. I love it. I love it. Love the mic. Sure. So Summer Paul McLean says thumbs up for the mic. Nathan Oakley, like thumbs up. Uh, Lenny from Canada says uh, vote number 33. <laughs> no mic. <laughs> well, and, and look, this would, the well, story it's a behind, gift. it is it's a gift a from documentary subject. Yeah. And I, who, the guy who I think got off absolutely clean in this documentary which was chris pontius right and if you have seen the bootleg of the documentary you didn't see him because they didn't see the him person uh, but, recording it cut it out but chris pontius made that for you as a gift yeah and you're using it it's a gift so yeah. therefore um even if it annoys a few people it it's a gift it's like, like when everything you know, annoys you know how it is some. Yeah. If, if the majority of people said, oh, it bugs me, my eyes, then it may be. But look, I'm staying right in front of it, and I'm fine. My mom gave me this navy for blue sure. sweater with a cream-colored crocheted collar that looked like a pilgrim with a big blue bow. And maybe people who watch me enough go, you wear weird stuff all the time. But this was like Little House on the Prairie on acid. And I wore that darn sweater over to the house because she gave it to me. Right. Uh, I didn't wear it anywhere else. I changed in my car <laughs> before I went in the house. And then when I got back in my car, I changed a long time ago. But, you know, it's it's the same with this mic. However, the mic isn't as heinous as that sweater was. The mic's kind of cool. No, the mic's but cool. I, I think I mean, people don't like uh, They think they might have an epileptic seizure. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a it's a sure it's a sure microphone. S-H-U-R-E. Not necessarily endorsing. I've used a whole bunch of different microphones. In fact, I have well, you used right to have here, a, a white, um, blue micro. It was called a blue brand. Oh, blue, blue brand microphone. I use that, but it's got a problem with Windows 10 and Skype, so I had to abandon that. And in fact, I've got another backup microphone down there. It's all black. I've I've gone through so many freaking microphones, and this one has. If you don't know, if you can't see it already. My name in LED lights. Your names in lights. I mean, yeah, someone right. makes you my, that. My, my, you my it. And it's done to where you can see the name. To where yeah. I only see because it's 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 clear it's translucent so I like to me my name's backwards and I have a little puff piece on it the um, uh, little foam thing on there so I don't do the whole Peter Piper picked you know that whole thing I have it too um, you know yeah but yours is metal mine's just mm -hmm. foam mine doesn't really work that well but yours I don't made out of top piece that some much sort of weird titanium alloy <laughs> just like I am um. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's funny seriously my ribs. Uh, I want to say hello to Anders Ace and AJC and Michael, Wake the Sheeple. He's here too. And uh, Paul on the Plane, who says, Mark, tell us more about Flat Earth Clue number 13, please. <laughs> Flat Earth Clue number 13, which I am in the process of building right now. I will not finish it until. Oh my gosh, exciting. 
uh, next week till the very. Is week. it going to have anything to do with P nine hundreds and looking? It is not going to do anything with P nine hundreds. Then you need clue fourteen after that. No, 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 no. I'm I'm stopping on thirteen until it, because it's partly a challenge. It's partly a clue and it's partly a challenge. It was. It's kind of a continuation of my declaration of war. I've been trying to. I've been calling out scientists now for months, saying, that, "Look, bring me out wherever you want me. Put me against a panel." I mean, I'm chock full of information. I'd love to, to go up against some sort of scientist or academic group. And then uh, people have been sending me, and I didn't come up with this idea on my own, like many of my ideas. Uh, the, the, as you know, I've been kind of focusing on the whole vacuum test thing, the, the, the power of a vacuum measured in Tor. And it all of a sudden occurred to me, and if anyone can find it, I'd love to see it. But it all of a sudden occurred to me that, and I won't give away the, the title of the clue, that the linchpin may, for me anyway, may not be something large, it may be something small. And that is the astronaut suit itself, the backpack mm -hmm. on the astronaut suit. And my challenge is I'm going to be put out to people. It's like, look, and you, you, you and I have kind of talked about this a little bit. Beforehand, people come to me every once in a while mm -hmm. and say, what would it take to get you to renounce flat earth? What, would, you know, what, what proof would you need? And I beforehand, it'd be like, give me a 4K camera on the side of a rocket and turn it on and fire it up. But, you know, we're talking, you know, it's got to be a license, you know, NASA. <laughs> Sorry, uh, cat's gone wild here. A lot of crazy noise. So. Licensed NASA rocket. Of course, that you know, the chance of you getting that is slim to none. I thought, well, maybe there's a test. Now, I kept thinking of the Brian D Dunning debate that I did back when David and I tag teamed against Brian he, Dunning. He and, was a skeptic, too, wasn't he? He was a skeptic. Yes, society. he was. And a little bit, his credibility was not great because, as you know, he went to prison for fraud. Uh, so it was just because he ripped eBay off of millions of dollars, which I think he kept. Uh, I think he hit it well enough, and and he basically anyway. The point was, he was saying what we really need is a test that you can do down here on the ground, something that 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 involves some sort of space thing. And I thought, yeah, the freaking astronaut suit, because the suit cannot work the way it's advertised. Similar to the ISS, you know, we've all talked about the ISS and how the ISS just just crack in half and and burst because of the the outside pressure. You know, the pressure of the of the atmosphere inside trying to get out into the vacuum of space. Same thing should be done with the spacesuit, meaning, and we could do this down here right now. Remember, as you know, the Apollo astronauts, they weren't tethered to anything like a G-force suit. They were just walking around, do to do playing golf, getting on cars, right? That suit should be operational right now. Anyone should be able to get into that suit and go into a vacuum chamber and pull the lever, and there you are, a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber. But from what I can tell, I challenge this to anyone listening, anyone you share this with, send me a video of an astronaut. I don't care who he is. I don't care how dated the footage is in a vacuum chamber. I can't find it. I can't find it. Scott Kelly, uh, uh, Terry Vertz, uh, uh, what's his face? Guitar guy. What's his name? Stupid Canadian guy. Um, ah, crap. Doesn't really matter. Any of them. I, and even the old guys, John Glenn, Buzz Aldrin, Neil, Neil Armstrong. I can't find any footage of them. You'd think this is a really, really important thing. Meaning, look, this is your life and death situation. You should at least test the suit with somebody in it, a live person. I know you'll say, oh, no, they tested the suit in a in a chamber. There was no one in it. It's like, what the hell does that do? You know, uh, so my challenge is put give me a suit. G give me it. Get me into a NASA facility. Put it's cheap. It's easy. Put me in a suit. Put me in the chamber. Pull the lever. What happens? Do I live or do I die? Now we don't want that to happen to you. Yeah, there, there's a contingency to this, and that is. Oh, uh, some people might want that to happen to well, you. Some people might. No, there's two suits you'll need. One for me. One for me, and one for you. And one for whoever's <laughs> issuing the challenge. You think you you sign you you have your faith in science? You absolutely have one hundred percent. Okay, put put your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. That is. Get in the suit yourself, go into that chamber with me, and let him pull the switch. You're never going to do it because the suit, any physics student, any physics student should be able to tell you right here and now, it cannot work as advertised. The suit is flexible. It is fabric. It should, as soon as a, a vacuum field, we'll call it vacuum field, vacuum pressure is applied, it should go tight as a snare drum and then burst and then you should die. So that's going to be part of part of clue 13, which is kind of a, you know how I do it. I kind of weave a little tapestry around well, that. Well, I just got this in. Somebody mentioned it. You agreed you'd make your next clue if you did one about no curvature. Huh? Uh, see, the thing is, is that that was episode 92, and it might have been in, in passing that you might have mentioned that. Now, this is just somebody in the, in the live chat saying that, that they remember you said that. Now, mm. 
but you know, I do think you should do clue 14 and do no measurable curvature. And you could do the uh, talking about the P 900 and use someone's footage for that. So you could do it. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll see. I want to, I want to get this, this Can is I kind twist of a, your arm through the, the many miles across the way. Maybe. This is <laughs> this, this one kind of, it, it's kind of sticking with me because it, it is, it, it, it ties to everything else. Meaning if the spacesuit cannot work the way it's supposed to, then everything that is shown with that suit is null and void it is by, by association. Meaning anything, anything that ever shows that suit is absolutely fake. The suit can, does not work the way it should. We see, and I, again, I know I'm giving some of the stuff away, but we see, if you look up the astronauts in, in their suits, they're always shown in the swimming pool. Swimming pool, swimming pool. The, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of footage of freaking astronauts in a swimming pool with the exact opposite of how you would test that suit. Uh, swimming pool, that's outward pressure coming in. And we're talking about very minimal pressure. It's only 20 feet underwater. If that, the vacuum field, infinitely more powerful and going the other direction. And we never see it. It's a big deal. So I'm going to, I'm going to cover it and put it. That's my challenge. Like, in fact, any astronaut I run into, had I gone back, had I gone back to the Piers Morgan thing and had Terry Vert actually talk to me and actually, uh, yeah, that's the first question I'm going to ask is say, have you ever tested in a vacuum chamber? Have you ever stepped into a chamber with your suit? And if they say yes, I'm going to say, do you have any footage in this regards? And they won't. They don't. It's not out there. Well, it can't be. In fact, if you type in in YouTube, if you type in flat, uh, um, sorry, not flat Earth, uh, astronaut vacuum chamber, uh, the, like the first uh, some of the some of the top videos in the top ten are flat Earth videos. Already looking at it, saying, "Look, these there's these guys are frauds. They're not doing anything. the The suit cannot work the way that it's advertised. The heating fine, the cooling fine, the oxygen humidity that's fine. I, I'll I'll give you all that. But what technology are you using to keep that man alive in a vacuum chamber that's in that backpack? Powered by a battery. Sorry, I, I know I'm going off. No, no, you you asked. You're the one who said clue thirteen. Yeah, you're right. And in the live chat, you you've been encouraged to go all the way to clue thirty three. <laughs> Whatever. No, I, most people. The reason why I haven't done, you know, I did clue twelve because uh, John Jonathan from Jersey asked me to, and I, I was going to stop at eleven, but. He he said, "Oh no, go twelve because he he had some ideas." And I said, "Okay, you know." And if people have ideas for clues, that's great. But I rarely get emails or phone calls saying, "Where's more clues?" Because it's enough to get people going. You know, it's enough to get you out in your hand glider off the cliff, and then you know you're fine. You don't necessarily have to. Um, Josh, authentic intent. Hello, thanks for being in the live chat. Writes uh, he he leaves a link how spacesuits are tested. And of course, I can't watch. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. T spacesuits are tested. I've seen that link. There's yeah. no people in them, right? They, they, they test the suits in a chamber with no people, and that is the safe way you would do it. It's like, yeah, but it, it, ask anyone who deals with any equipment. You always test the stuff yourself. Anybody, even the pilots, get out of their freaking planes and walk around it and start kicking the tires. An astronaut not get you know not getting into a vacuum chamber himself. I would want to make sure that thing was bulletproof. And it's not, it cannot physically, physics will not allow it to work. It can't do it. There's if it, because which is, it's too loose. If there's air between your arm and the outside of that suit, that air will want to get out. And, and the pressure, the outside pressure will make that, that suit just go completely rigid. It'll be like you were a piece of wood. It reminds me of uh, the debate that happened at, um, uh, Gary John and Dee Dee's Flat Earth International uh, Convention in the UK, where the physicists, student physicists, students were uh, talking with the flat earthers. They kind of did a debate. Well, I don't mean kind of. They did a debate, right. and one of the things was talking about the thing I've brought up a number of times. We all have where the rocket going through uh, to space pierces through the atmosphere into the vacuum of space right. and the hole that it makes. And why doesn't it just you know? destroy the world as we know it. And right. they were saying it makes a small hole and it is quickly mended. And then the, the guys mended on our side what? said, gravity, well, can you show me some proof of this? And it yeah. was really, really interesting and really good. They just were repeating what they'd been taught. And you can't really blame yeah. them, but I certainly hope that the intelligence and good humor of the flat earthers there will spur at least one of them to really look into this. 
I'm appreciating the science more. I'm learning more about science now in the last all few years than I have all of us. All my years about the 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 drinking and university years probably don't count <laughs> but all the all the years previous to that which is why i include in the beginning of every strange world episode now that wonderful german rail car steel rail car that gets crushed when a, a tin I, can like, by a jet yeah, yeah yeah like 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 it was getting eaten by godzilla the thing was and it happened instantly and it is basically if you want to know what you're looking at you're looking at what happens to a submarine if they go too deep when they go, a submarine goes too deep, they hit crush depth, which means the pressure of the water is going to overcome the integrity of the hull, and it crushes it. And you're saying, okay, what's that got to do with space? What, I'm, what it means is, is the opposite. That container was actually more or less the same width, maybe a little smaller than the ISS. Imagine that in reverse, where the air is inside that thing, and the vacuum is on the outside. E a, a steel container, you might have a chance. You might have a chance. Not aluminum and plastic. It's not going to happen. The ISS would blow up. It would blow up. And in fact, remember airplanes, which you and I flew on recently. The reason, if you had an altimeter, which I've taken on planes, because I had one built into my watch years ago, which is when you get up to a certain cruising altitude, they pressurize the, the cabin at 5,000 feet to reduce some of the pressure. They don't have to pressurize it at sea level because they know that most people can handle 5,000 feet. It's like you're going up in the mountains a little bit. They don't tell anybody this. It's people just, they're kind of disoriented anyway in an airplane. The point is to reduce the strain on the plane. So tell me how that plane works because that's what we're talking about. Same mm -hmm. sort of hole, how that plane works in a total vacuum. Cannot do. When I flew from Houston, I uh, it was... Um nonstop that I flew to Toronto, you know, to go to the hot dogs yeah. uh, documentary behind the curve. The woman I had sitting next to me was an educator. She didn't tell me exactly what she did, but she was some sort of professor. And I started talking with her about flat earth and she wasn't bored or trying. She kept asking me questions. When I started, you know, you put out that tentative, you know, she asked me, well, I asked her why she, where she was going. And you know, she, she, then she asked me where I was going and blah, blah, blah. And I ended up telling her a little bit about flat earth. And then uh, we talked about it and she said, very interesting. And I wrote down some links for her videos, different channels and, and different and the flat earth podcast um, and flat earth clues and et cetera. And then after that, I said, there's also, she said, is it the only thing you look into? And I said, no, lots of things, including by the way, this is nothing I've really looked into, but we in Flat Earth have heard about the the no fuel thing or that it's compressed sure. air with some fuel on planes. Right. Um, and I told her about that and she said we were near the wing and she, well, everybody on a plane is near the wing, but you could see the wing out of the window. And she said, they put fuel in that? Uh, and I said, yes, maybe not every plane, but I don't know enough about it. Almost all, that. almost all. And um they're, they're, they're quite thin. And she said, I can't imagine it. It would have to be an amazingly built structure in order to hold all that fuel. And then there was a pilot, weirdly enough, in a chair next to us, not flying the plane, hopefully not. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of the movie Airplane where they had the autopilot, like a blow up. Right, thing. the blow up doll. But the, this guy, you know, full on pilot uniform was like, kind of like sleeping, passed out, head lolling. And uh, I... I wanted to ask him, but I didn't want to wake him up. And then a flight attendant walked by, you know, asking if I wanted something or coffee or whatever. And um, after I said, bottle of Jack and make it quick, baby, I asked her about <laughs> where you put the I fuel see in the glass. <laughs> and she said, in the fuel tank, maybe? That's what she said. She had she no didn't, idea. She didn't know. Well, of course she didn't know. But, yeah. you know, she said, you can ask the pilot and pointed, but he was sleeping, so. I, no, the most of the, again, that was my investigation. Not yeah, much fuel, fuel in the wings. It's been, they've been using fuel in the wings for a long, long, long time. As soon as they had metal wings, actually, hmm. they it was like, well, I got to put them somewhere. Why not put them in the wings? Well, the thing is, is that how much fuel? I don't know. It could be the compress. It could be something uh, different going common on. Common flat earth side effects include extreme open mindedness. Right. And I'm um, not saying that that's not true. I'm no, saying, no, no, no. Look, I, look into everything. No, no forest on flat earth. Look how quick that thing took off. Oh, yeah. I, st I still dig it. I it's think it's a, I think it's a fantastic you concept. You never know. You never yeah, know. Why not?
Yeah. Um, but then again, a lot of people don't like those things mixed in with flat earth. They say it's muddying the waters, but you can't prevent, we can't like build fences. You yeah, can only talk about this. I mean, it, it doesn't matter because once you get into flat earth, everything's back on the table. It's yeah. seriously, you have to go into your attic and grab everything mm -hmm. you put up there. Dust off JFK, yeah. dust off 9-11, dust yeah. off oh, like you're bringing cancer down all, treatments, chemotherapy. All the old albums. They're all coming them. back down. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Even Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> Even Dark Side of the Moon. I'm going to play everything the Beatles ever wrote. I'm not going to play all of Hey Jude. And backwards. Um, Paul on the Plane is uh, asking if anyone ever flew on an air sphere. <laughs> good one. That's good funny. one. Uh, I want to say hi to Tommy Rogers. Tommy uh, was at our uh, ping pong flat earth meetup in Toronto. Yay. And uh, he's a cool guy. He's talking back and forth with Martin Liebke about some of the buildings in Toronto that he wants Martin to look into. Yeah. So, um, Toronto, again, big place. Big place. And we're lucky. I imagine in the winter it can be a little, a little biting. It yeah, is but Canada. then you stay inside. You keep cozy with like, yeah. beautiful sweaters. I like cold weather. With but beautiful you know, sweaters. Oh, you know what I think of cold <laughs> As weather? As opposed to ugly sweaters? Well, I don't know. But Okay, I remember. Do you own any unattractive clothing? Well, some people might say my entire wardrobe, but no, my answer to that's no, I don't. No, no, <laughs> you don't. I mean, because there's some people that it's like, you know, the, they have stay at home outfits. Oh, well, you know, wear. you've seen me wear some stuff. Like, it kind of looks like workout clothes, like uh, leggings. What I'm wearing now, I'm wearing a, what's this thing called? I can't remember the name of it. It's not a jumpsuit, it's a romper. It's sh really short shorts attached to a top. Yeah. That's stay at home yeah, clothes. I'm, I'm sad because I don't know if the lanyard I'm going to be bringing you for the Denver conference is going to be good enough <laughs> because you actually own a Chanel Lanford. Lanyard, yeah, to hold the badges lanyard, on. Lanyard, I certainly. Lanyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of Where do you even buy a Chanel lanyard? If you get invited to a Chanel runway fashion show, they put your press credentials or your you know guest credentials on a lanyard that says Chanel on it. And, and I saved mine. I don't know. One wow yep that's right haters take that loop <laughs> right there <laughs> hey you know we all were doing something else before we got into flat earth and we all are products of whatever it is that we were doing before so exactly you know exactly yeah. Yeah. what else is going on in uh in the chat and thanks to everybody who uh, thanks to everyone who's here you would think i've never been in radio before with that letter, crazy uh letters we, I get letters. We I have 280 lost. people watching right now, well, and hopefully letters. everyone will give it a thumbs up. It's not often. And by the way, my if some of you haven't already figured out, the my mailing address is actually in, I'm, I don't care if I show this, my mailing address is actually in the description box mm -hmm. right up at the top of every single video I have now. Mm -hmm. And you guys can send me whatever you want. I don't really care. And somebody sent me a handwritten letter. It's in, you know, is it written in blood? And does it no, say no, we will die? Yeah. No, not this one. Most okay. of them are, are are those cut out letters, you know, yeah. with extra creepy. I will get you with my twenty four <laughs> centimeter knife. Uh, and she also sent me a clip of a newspaper. I mean, seriously, uh, with most of the time people send me emails with links to things. In this case, she did not send me a link. She actually sent me the newspaper clipping <laughs> of uh, research hopes to keep astronauts healthy. Another space reinforcement story. Well, so, what about Scott Kelly? Is supposedly uh, on board the ISS for a year. His DNA changed. Changed by seven or eight percent. Yeah, his no, brother Mark uh, here on Earth. Crap. By the way, that letter was written by Jody from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Minnesota, up there, yeah, near the Iron Range. Yeah, mm -hmm. got her. Hey, so mm -hmm. thank you, Jody and uh, Scott Kelly. I also have to mention. He was the guy that you saw oh, in the trailer in he the was documentary. In the documentary, he's, he's, it's a real interview. Yeah, it's not they, just that they grabbed it off some other mm -hmm. media, but they, they sat down and talked to him for a very limited amount of time. And we he asked got the out, director how how'd you get a hold of Scott? How Kelly? the hell are you get a Scott Kelly? You know, and they, they got a hold of him, and he he gave out the sound bite that they wanted him to get out, which that was, NASA told him to say, "I'm betting." Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't come up that one. You come up. You can't come up with on the fly. No way. And that is, I first heard about flat Earth when I was in space. Mm -hmm. you know, then they show him doing a somersault, yeah, somersault on wires or whatever. Yeah. And then he says, "I can't believe I'm talking about this." And the audience laughed as if on cue. <laughs> but he is, and he was, and given the shoestring budget on this, it wasn't for the money. So why was he talking to him at all? Exactly. If it's so unimportant. Why does NASA bring out 
from the mothballs, a retired astronaut. Hmm. Yeah. Because hey, Scott, if you're listening, show me your freaking spacesuit test. Show yeah. me you in a vacuum chamber. <laughs> once, just once, by ten yeah. second video. Show me ten <laughs> seconds of you in a vacuum chamber. And show us the underground bunker where you lived during that quote unquote year in space, yeah, where you had a space. big workout gym and tons of yeah. movies to watch and books and the finest food. You know, you know, yeah. show us the truth, Scott Kelly. Yeah. The man that, that sets supposedly a world record in space. And then the second he touches the ground, he quits NASA. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Who wrote that? <laughs> Whoever writes all of the script for all of this. Put me in a room with that guy <laughs> for 10 minutes. Oh, we have a news update on the rest of the world from Carly Sunshine, who says Israel is bombing Iranians in Syria currently. Really? Um, is that a thing? You know what? Know. That's how I hear about the mainstream news. It sort of filters into chats. I accidentally see it when I sign into Google. Uh, uh, let me, Chris, let me. Uh, Chris, a Flat Earth photographer channel, says that maybe that's why Scott Kelly's DNA changed. You know, the leaky suit. <laughs> So, well, I, here's the thing, uh, w again, which is why I showed that rail car vacuum, the vacuum balancing is no joke. It's instant. Don't believe anything you see in the movies when it comes. Well, to I mean, it is, true. you take an Electrolux, you take a Dyson, and one's heavier. It's really hard to balance them. Oh, my God. So you're talking about something else? All right. The fact that I know about both of those kind of worries me. <laughs> totally straight saying that I know about vacuum brands. Mm -hmm. uh, what? I'm a clean person. Mm -hmm. Dyson's the best, just saying. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> this show is sponsored by oh, I'm I'm a big Electrolux fan. I'll, I'll say really? right yeah. yeah, yeah. But but no, power of vacuum, it's instant. We're talking about an area of nothing next to an area of something. And it is instantaneous, fraction of a second. It is, you know, when people say, Oh, my suit, I'm right out of air. No, 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 no. It is it's uh, dead. That's it. You're dead. <laughs> There is no <laughs> fumbling for dials and hooking things back up and crap. No, you're only in the movies. Because or not, only, not only does it suck out everything in your suit, it collapses your your lungs instantaneously because your lungs have air in them. It takes every any any air that's in you. I can't even imagine what happens if you like air in your bowels and stuff. Ooh, it'd be horrifying. Everything, every part. Like if you had a little thing of air in your body, it would. Oh man, I should look some of that stuff up. Death by vacuum. Horrible. Not a good thing. It'd be terrible. Uh, which is, which parents, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm Please. sorry. Which is also why, let's take that bigger and more mechanical, which is why the SpaceX Tesla Roaster thing was such a ridiculous thing. Because a lot of those systems in the car have pressurized air in them. Oh, and now have you noticed? I tried finding it flying somewhere, some kind of video on it. Nothing. Can't find anything anymore. So what do they say? It went out of range or something? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly and no one the remembers track. the story. Ooh, nope. even Earthers remember it, but the rest of the world is safe. Oh, right. That car that was in space. Yeah, which is why I show it. I now have that clip and I show it in the beginning of Strange World episodes. Right after the opening credits, you get to see the Tesla thing every time just to let yes. people know. Because yes. I want people to look at it and go. That looks stupid. That, that looks stupid. No, no, dude, that was real. Yeah, you know, it's like, what? And seriously, that remember when I was at meetup in, in the Springs, Colorado Springs. And I was showing it up on the, had some guy pull it up on the screen behind me and some guy in this had never seen it. He missed the whole story. And he goes, and he goes, he goes, what, is that real? And I go, yeah. He goes, no. I go, yeah. I've told people about it and they said, well, it doesn't look real, but there must be some explanation or yeah, he did it as an advertisement for his company. Like, Really? No logos on it, like you said. That makes yeah, no, no sense. logos. No, yeah, yeah. What what advertising? People do you do believe with... that's true. How can people? Be... It's almost as crazy as remember way back when when you would talk about the sky being a display system, which you still believe, and still other believe. people don't believe that, which is cool. That you you have a right to your model, but how you used to say, "Hey, they could put Patricia's face on the moon if they wanted to," and by that you meant with the way the sky is, oh in yeah, the model, yeah, they could do anything. So. Basically, the people who are believing the Tesla car went into space with a mannequin in it that they called Spaceman, and it's flying around there with no special uh, things done to it to make it space proof. They might as well just believe my face is on the moon. It's just as logical. Yeah. And and for those people who are just figuring out what I said there, the if the world is a planetarium, that means literally there's no limit to what you can do in the sky. If the sky is just lights. 
the sky yeah. is the limit. Remember, don't forget, yeah. and I know this dates me, and I know kids don't do it now. The fact that I say the word kids still bothers me, which is back in the day on weekends and planetariums, they would shut down the planetarium and then turn it into Laser Floyd and Laser Led Zeppelin, where people would get on their back and I'm sure completely sober, would look up at the, the ceiling and it would do all these laser effects to whatever, you know, the, the entire track of Led Zeppelin 4 or uh, the wall or dark side of the moon, most likely. In high school, there was a period of time in science class where we would go on a bus field trip and we'd go to the planetarium in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And I remember what would happen to me immediately upon entering the planetarium is I'd just fall asleep. I learned nothing. It was just nice and dark in there. Yeah. And I just found oh, and it was and yeah, and very cool. No, planetariums are fun. It's just nobody goes to them anymore because it, there's too many other things to do. And I'm that's almost what like Neil deGrasse Tyson does for a living. Is yeah, run Neil's planetarium. official job is running the Hayden Planetarium, mm -hmm. which I do not recommend that we bomb or set fire to at all, yeah. ever. No, because I want, people to, I want people to go to planetariums. I want them to go inside, which is why I've used in little video clips those portable, inflatable planetariums. They're not hard to build. And we went, when I came to visit you in Seattle, we went into the Air and Space Museum and they had one of those inflatable planetariums. I think it was for children. It was very low. I think you had to crawl to get in. Right. I was thinking about doing it and then I thought that won't look like that great for a video for me crawling. No, probably not. Not, so, not the best not image for Flat Earth. Not. It would have been, well, depending on how you shot it. It was like first person, it'd be really creepy. <laughs> you going through this weird. That would be cool. But if tunnel. you just shot me on all fours crawling, no, that would be. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have shot it like that. Yeah. No. You? <laughs> Who knows no, what you would have done? No, probably not. So, <laughs> what? I'm not. What well, you, I want to say hello to Ginger Sugarbush905, who we also met at the Ping Pong Bar in Toronto, uh, Canada, for he called our Flat Earth Meetup. Yes, he did. And Ginger Sugarbush, well, the Ginger Sugarbush, but, you know, he's got red hair and he's got a beard, so it's the perfect name for him. He's got and, some tats. And, he got, and he's got a bunch of cats, tats and cats. Cats and tats. So, uh, Let's see who else I want to say hello to. I don't know if I said hello to Tinfoil Hatter yet. Haven't seen Tinfoil Hatter around for a while, but hello. Tinfoil Hatter writes, it's almost blasphemous, the mere suggestion that Elon Musk is anything less than saintly. <laughs> um, Brian Stavely asks, how are my ping pong skills? Well, the only person I played ping pong with, because I was busy chatting with everyone, was uh, uh, Bronca, who I mentioned earlier, a, a woman who lives in Canada, who is a friend of mine, kind of, and, and yours now, Mark, as well. Uh, I play, played ping pong with her, but I was really too busy kind of being the social butterfly, trying to talk to everybody. My ping pong skills are kind of just like average. You know, I can hit the ball back and forth like three or four times, and then, you know, I lose it. Or the, It's not Forrest Gump. No. No, Basically. it's super fun though. And you know, if I played a lot, I'd get better because it's something that I enjoy, but I don't have a ping pong uh, table in my house. I should mm. get one. That would be awesome. Um, I want to say hi to Scuba, Dracula, Effie, Hamilton, somebody else who we met. At, he uh, saw, he uh, saw the pong. documentary. Yeah, he certainly did. And he's greeting Tommy Rogers, who was also there. Um, what By the way, thank you for all the flat earthers that showed up at these things. Oh, the, yeah. They were flat earthers literally at all three showings. That's that's saying something. Yes. It's a, it's a film festival up in Toronto. There's one theater showing this movie, you know, ever. And we had flat earthers at all three showings. And Mig Mag was there at the uh, the flat earth meetup. And he went to go see the very last uh, showing of uh, the, the film at the Hot Docs Theater, uh, the TIFF Theater. And he said, you know, it's going to get the name flat earth, the words flat earth out there. He thought that he wished there were more flat earth proofs in there. Heck, I wish there were more flat earth proofs in there, but the, that's not anything. It wasn't, wasn't that sort of movie because remember, right, if right. we put in flat earth proofs, then it's going to turn into one of those movies where yeah, it, they didn't, they just wanted to know other things. About you couldn't, that. you couldn't put in the proof. You couldn't put in both sides of that and keep the people angle. Yeah, and in the future, there perhaps will be something made that shows the flat earth proofs that would be on the potential to be on the big screen because this is just the first. Right. It's, it's just the first. It's like, remember your first bicycle and then or your first car and then look what you've got now. Remember your first girlfriend or boyfriend and then look what you've got now. Boy, I wish you could go back in time now, don't you? No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> what I mean is sometimes the first thing that you do 
isn't you know, 100% where, the way we want it, but things move forward. And in order to get things to look to move forward, you've got to be the first to do something. And I'm really happy that, you know, that Bob and Cammy that were, were in it and, 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 and Jared and Mrs. in it too. And, and all of the people that we've mentioned and Nathan Thompson, um, or Nathan Thomas, excuse me, that no, everyone Thompson. is Thompson. Oh, why am I getting Thomas? Who's yeah, Nathan I Thomas? I'm, I, I think I was thinking of Thomas Scott news, weirdly enough that oh, uh, right. he came back Scott. and made a video recently. That's why he's sort of kicking around in my brain. Yeah. And um, I think he went to the Sacramento meetup. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ace McLeod is here who says the documentary was great. That is cool. Um, we've got Robbie D of Celebrate Truth here, and I'll be back in Canada next time I see you, Robbie, along with Mark. We're going to the Edmonton Flat Earth Conference, yep. as well as the one coming up in Denver. Oh, and I do need to mention um, the Denver uh, Conference. Uh, D-I-T-R-H, along with Curious J of the Flat Earth Podcast, have done a GoFundMe. And um, it's to put a billboard up in Denver at I-70 in the downtown area. They picked a location. They've got to go fund me. So all you need to do is just go to GoFundMe and put in FEIC 2018. Or if you've donated it to, for billboards before, you'll and the the one in Raleigh got some out. good press. So this should be this should be yeah. good. Yeah. So I threw in some money, and I saw Robbie of Celebrate Truth threw in some money. Uh, a bunch of people threw in money. So um, William Gensky threw in money, and by now other people have. I haven't been checking back, but I shared it on my Facebook and my Twitter. So if you follow me uh, on either of those platforms, you'll be able to see the link where you can do it too. I'll try to remember to put a link in this very video. Um, I want to say hello to Jack Frost. He said he saw the bootleg, which no one's supposed to download. We are not encouraging anybody to do that. We do are not encouraging. No, no, and, and I uh, don't. He said I, it was honestly, great. He liked it a lot. So. I'm not saying that tongue in cheek, where it's like you know. No, no. I mean, watch it, the bootleg responsibly. One of those things. Yeah. Uh, no. You really it shouldn't happened. because someone it, did, and it got out, and you can't put the horse back in the barn if you leave the door open. Horse back in the. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, it doesn't have nearly the impact, not even a tenth of the impact that the real film has, because it is not the entire film. It's only a little over half, and there were, it was shot out of sequence. Well, you know, it was. It, if if you're dying to see it, yeah, you might get something out of it, but you really should support the producers on this thing when it comes out, and uh, get copies. You know what I think it's going to be like for flat earthers? It's, I just thought of this just now. It's going to be kind of like. Oh, wow, you know, I'm going to say it like Passion of the Christ when that came out and churches bought tons and tons and tons of copies. That's where it made its money was the DVD sales and they just bought all these copies. I own it. I mean, there were, but I mean, like it's got you, a great you go soundtrack. In, you go into that. churches and they'd have cases of these things lying Didn't around know. because it's like it was just mandatory. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, here, Bible, Passion of the Christ, Bible, Passion of the Christ. That would be, I am going to give this to every, I don't know how many copies I'm going to buy, but I'm going to give this to every family member I have, every friend that ever gave me crap. Yeah, you just uh, keep one in your car and then you just give it when yeah. the time is right to someone. It's yeah. not a teaching tool about flat earth, but it opens people's minds in a different way. That flat yeah. earthers aren't nuts, which is yeah. the way regular media portrays us. It, that's that's a, it, it is how I would treat anyone that is not exactly the most open-minded person in the world because it's easy to digest for mm -hmm. anybody could watch it it's meant for anybody yeah it's entertaining and if people just take it that way it's entertaining and then one day that same person who just took it as entertainment and thought oh flat earthers they're cute but they're nuts one day they'll see something else in the newspaper or something else on tv and they'll be thinking to themselves wait a minute this seems to not be going away it's just right. like that movie i saw it's everywhere maybe i should look into it and then you know la brea tar pits as you put it will occur yeah, yeah, yeah. where they're you know sinking into flat earth and they, they say help me and ask someone else to pull them out and then they get pulled into it yeah you know? it's kind of it's kind of like a flat earth trojan horse it's certainly and, and that is people you know it's like oh yeah flat earth bring it into your home <laughs> next thing you know what I mean, because all it takes is you watching it and then getting that lit remember the seed in your head that's all it's about yes and then you look it's like oh i'm just gonna google it just eh, for 10 seconds yeah then. it can't hurt no it's like what what's yeah, happening honey and, come uh, to bed just a minute i just need to google something really quick tick, 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 and then 
seven hours later, sun's yeah. coming up, you're still looking at flat earth videos. Exactly. 11 days later, it's like, <laughs> you can't take any more PTO. <laughs> exactly. What? Uh, yep. I'm really That's on it. through the That's looking it. glass here, people. Yeah. Uh, everyone's saying happy birthday to Karen B. We mentioned Yay, her birthday. Karen oh, yeah. B. Um, Cammy well, says she's really good at ping pong. Uh, she is in our live chat. And by the way, her her uh, her name is Aisling. If you ever see Aisling 717, that is Cammy. Uh, uh, That's Cammy? Wife. Yes. Oh, I hate her. <laughs> oh, whatever. And um, what else? Uh, she said she was just at the billboard location in Denver because she and Bob live in Denver to check out the location. She says it's awesome. It's the junction of I-70, US-36, E-470, about one mile east of Denver. Now, this location is different than the lo location in Raleigh, North Carolina, which was on this massive hill. Um, Carly Sunshine and I were climbing the hill uh, along with, uh, I think... I don't think you can... I, and I fell down because people were trying to help pull us up, and I fell, and Carly was helping push me up. You know, it was I... Because the ground was super muddy. So this will be better because it's going to be cold in Denver for the, uh, the cold-ish anyway, for the conference coming up. Is there foot access to this? Because yes, there are yes, and parking too. So maybe it'll be better because of the chill factor. It'll mm. be colder. And my old, my old you know, hopefully the businesses around will be cool with Flat Earthers cars being parked there for, I don't know, like a half hour for DITRH to get his drone out and do a flyover and for all of us to gather for a photo op. But mm. it'll be very great because... The location, not just for our convenience, to keep us warmer, to not have to stand out in a giant field we have to climb hills to get to, uh, but people will be able to see it. It's cl very close to where the road is. So when they drive, it'll be boom, right there. No missing mm -hmm. it. No missing it at all. So right hopefully on. it'll get funded. And like I said, it's a GoFundMe now for the billboard. And I will put a link in the description box of this video. Um, if you're watching live, check back later for sure. Uh, glaucoma is here now, and I want to say hello to That's glaucoma. A terrible name. That's funny. <laughs> that was it. Funny. Well, it's not glaucoma like the thing that happens to your eyes when you're elderly. It's like glock, like the gun. Oh uh, yeah, even better. Nice. <laughs> yeah, firearms and, with and a cancer. Glaucoma has been around. Glaucoma, the YouTuber, uh, with a I think a skeleton oh, and his as his uh, as his icon has been around since I think we started the Secret Show. Internet clever. It's good. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, NASA Lies saying hello here as well. I think that's Candy. It just doesn't look like Candy's picture. But anyway, I guess it's Candy. Did I say hello to Flat Earth Vegans? I have no idea. But if I didn't, hello. And if I did, you get it twice. Um, let's see. What else is going on? Spherical Cow is here. Osher 06. Ron Hagberg. Plant-based comedian is here too saying hello, Steer and Sergeant. I find it funny when people call me by the last name Steer. Do you usually call women by the last name like uh, that? I mean, it seems like a dude thing. No, no. Most of the time, you don't. Mostly, it's a guy <laughs> thing. Well, I know plant-based comedian is not inferring. But that. we tend to go when we're when idiot. we're linked together, <laughs> which we are. Yes, yes, Steer and Sergeant. All, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Or okay. Sergeant and Steer. You know, either one, no, really. Steer, Sergeant, Sergeant, Sergeant rolls Sergeant off Steer. the tongue like so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. My agent will probably have to talk. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah I know. Happened? Yeah, billing. There you go. Mm -hmm. who, who, gets, who gets top billing? <laughs> um, the, well, I was going to say, I, I thought of something recently. Oh, by which, the way, uh, I do have to correct you. You said that glaucoma is cancer. It's not cancer. All right. It's not cancer. It's still bad. Well, okay. Right. In fact, okay, a degenerative eye disease. Sorry, Correct. Can cancer's quicker. People Correct. get it. And you know what? I've heard that everyone gets glaucoma if you live long enough. I'm not sure if that's indeed true, but I go to the eye doctor. I have a contact in one eye to read up close. The other eye is mm -hmm. naked. Um, and the doctor said that you can see, if you do this special test that kind of costs extra in an eye exam, you can see a baby uh, glaucoma sort of happening, and they keep a watch on it. Now, I didn't have that, but... The, they told me that they look and they they follow if you've got it. And mm. it can be treated very early where people a long time ago would go blind. But, of course, we live longer than we used to, supposedly, according supposedly, to Supposedly, depending on who you listen to. Um, Tinfoil Hatter says it might be due to irradiation, being irradiated by, you know, towers. What are we talking that. about? I don't know. Glaucoma? Cataracts? Just general glaucoma? Well, I mean, I, I know, know you're, I, I will say this cell phone's really locked no, down. No, I'm wrong. Because, it's not glaucoma that we all get. It's cataracts that we can all get when cataracts we Cataracts we all get. Yes. Uh, you know, 
<laughs> cataracts are high pressure in the eye and they do that test where they either touch your eye with a thing that looks like a lit cigarette lighter or yeah. a puff either one oh my god i hate it i'm always like with my neck my chin in that thing waiting for the puff or the what looks like a blue lit cigarette lighter to come toward your eye and you just blink and it's pure hell hmm. pure hell what about you though you know you had to have all that stuff done you had lasik done trisha you there yeah exactly Ooh, uh imagine. i had it done in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh my vision was 2050 at mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. not 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 too terrible but i was noticing that i by the time i came up on road signs at night i would like be really close to missing the exit you know, by the time i could read it, it's like do i turn here because i was doing business traveling and i realized like all right i better get this done and it, the lasix uh, you know it's not for everybody but it is an amazing procedure because it's all everyone says the same thing. And I w watched a lot of my friends go through it first because I was never you know, I wasn't going to jump into this. And it's all it's 90 percent, 95 percent prep and then 10 minutes of, you know, hitting you with lasers. You know, but you can't see anything because your eyes are dilated. And oh my that's, God, I don't think I can do it. I just right right now I'm getting the what do they call it? The heebie jeebies. No, 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 because you can't see anything. Yeah, and and it is it's, everyone says the same thing it's like everyone gets really really worried and when you sit in the chair you don't know um what's the saying uh some some things you you can't be told you have to live them yeah yeah i know what you're saying and in this case that was it People i mean say, i don't get married and you know <laughs> well, yeah, uh, <laughs> i've made two marriage jokes in this show so far i'm not against marriage they just happen to fit in with what we're talking about yeah, some things like you tell people you know not to do a whole bunch of acid no it's like, mm -hmm. oh, but you know, then I'll just swallow it. It'll be fine. Yeah. So, uh, no, when, when you get um, LASIKs done, it's all, you, you, I mean, you know, literally you have it done and you sit in the waiting room and your eyes start clearing up and they say, just make sure somebody's driving you home. Yeah, I think it's cool. There's such a thing and as don't, that. And don't scratch. I mean, it lasts for a while. It's not a permanent right, solution. Because you're aging and then you yeah, you're to, aging, like, you know, get facelifts. Like, it's you have to, you have to also be a, a candidate. So if you have if your eyes are really, really bad, they didn't even used to take you. Now they've gotten better and better and better. I still know people though that they um their eyes were bad enough to where they, they said, Yeah, LASIK is LASIK isn't gonna help you. But whatever. I want operations to be like they were told to us that they would be like on Star Trek, the original series, where they take this silver wand thing and wave it over a person just happily lying down in the, what are they right, called? Right, 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 right. They call it the bay. They called it the, I don't, can't remember, the sick bay, sick bay. Sick bay yeah. And it was like, and they were healed. <laughs> Gaping wounds healed, no problem. That's what I want. Yeah, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. I suppose. Someday, but. someday. Uh, let's see. We had a couple of uh, people were talking about glaucoma being high pressure and uh, cataracts that dogs and cats bo both get, which is indeed true. Um, let's see. Um, Lucy Lemons is saying sun gazing helps. Somebody else named Pink Polenta says sun gazing does not help. Karen B says cannabis helps with everything. And uh, so. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Karen yeah. is still working on her birthday. Um, exactly. Well, it's only just begun for Karen. Um, Arwen is saying glaucoma is the thing that cannabis helps with. So we're with the pressure. So we're not medical doctors. We just play them on YouTube. <laughs> Don't listen to anything we say, please. Don't take our advice. Um, somebody in here says, uh, is this a live stream by flat earth believers? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Flat we earth is we're not way. believers. We're not flat earth is the truth. Join us. It's not belief that this is all about. Uh, the flat earth vegans say they love sun gazing. So, death to all those who oppose us. <laughs> flat Earth. Hail Hydra. Glaucoma donated five dollars to Super Chat and says, "I love the eyeball talk." <laughs> eyeball talk. Crazy. Any Super Chat money I get because I I don't ask for it and it, I always get a very small amount, if any, it will go back to somebody else's Super Chat. I promise. Oh, also, little sorry. I know we're gonna pepper this with with documentary stuff as I remember things. Of course, one of my favorite things from the documentary was the fact that there were cats, <gasps> and that didn't show in the bootleg. They didn't show. Uh, them there were cats in all these different shots. Everyone's cats, not just my. Three. Everybody's cats. Everybody had cats. And the thing is, they showed my three, but it kind of made it appear as if I had five thousands because if you don't yeah. know the cats individually, you might think that's a bunch. Well, of they're cats. always moving pretty quickly. It's right, exactly. Another thing that I thought was not so good. I was wearing this green dress. It's got what's known as an empire, which is a 
French way to say empire waste, you... which means the waste goes right under your breasts. And yeah. um, I have this thing, and maybe other women can relate, whenever I eat, because I'm thin, if I eat a big meal, my stomach looks like I'm pregnant for a couple hours. And they filmed me at a point where it looks like I just had a big meal. So uh, it looks like, what a skinny woman. Is she pregnant? <laughs> so, you no. look so, so Wait, I mean, I want to show everyone I'm in this movie. not pregnant and not fat. So in case anybody's wondering, it just was one of those moments where a lot of women have it when they get their period, they get a little puffy or a food baby, as they call it. A food. I have well, never Well, you know, we're it. all critical of ourselves when we see ourselves yep. on the, yep. on the, not the big screen. I, you know. I was sitting there just shaking my head. I mean, granted, I had, I had my, they shot me about as well as they could shoot me. And I was still, again, wreck <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> Bob of Globe Buster says, Prego or Regu? <laughs> when they, when they were showing, could have been Regu. When they were shooting me in slow motion, yes. I looked like a monster who was about to stomp a town. You know, there's no. that sort of like, oh, you and adorable might have, might have and very, forget about looks. You came off as what you are, super excited about Flat Earth and the Flat Earth community. That's what you look like. You yeah, look like what you are. Perfect. I yeah. I suppose. But I, I, I can only hope that I represented the community as, as, as well as you hoped that I would, and uh, you know, do what you can. Uh, you know, the microphone was on me for so long that I was just hoping that they didn't, you know, use. I'm sure Nick, if he's listening to this now, going, "Oh, dude, you are so well, lucky." We walked around with microphones, and in fact, I even stood up and showed it once, like a pack strapped to our back, or yeah. sometimes it would be down the back of my dress or in my boot or whatever, um, to. And then it was pinned or clipped somewhere, right. and harder for you. Yeah, because different outfits require different whatever. But um, you'd walk around for like the whole day with that, and in the end, they might have filmed you for two seconds. But everything right. you said, they were recording. And then, of course, when you went into the bathroom, you'd have to remember to unplug it, and maybe sometimes I didn't. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's like, well, it's the bathroom, it's like, and I figured you know, it didn't use any of those sound effects thank goodness <laughs> the editors probably heard it all anyway and the wireless right. range on that thing i don't know how good it was and, right. and if but they were from what i understand if they weren't if their camera wasn't on you they weren't shoot they weren't recording it anyway because it mm -hmm. wasn't like there was a separate audio feed that was constantly going in the camera basically he had to have the camera running to get the audio in as well it was syncing up I, that's what i understood but either way, yeah, it's tough because you do forget after a while. You forget, you have, even after a couple hours. Well, that's what they want. They want you to forget so you act natural. Right. So yeah, so you're not not so stiff. You know, right. like hello, well, I am how a are you? Not Earther. Yes. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> Join us. Join us. Scuba Dracula Effie Hamilton says you did fine, Mark. Uh, uh, Stephen Chess is here. I'm going to interview Stephen Chess at some point because he's doing this thing on his channel where he can predict the weather. He calls it flat Earth weather, and I think we're doing it next Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I forgot. So everybody knows I, I wanted said. somebody else to be on camera. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think people. at one point I'm going to be uh, interviewing Nicole Cote because I had it set up, and then her mother unfortunately passed. And then, oh, right. you know, I've, I, she did, a, um, she comes to mind because she recently did a video in which she put the link to her chat. She was just doing one of her normal hangouts in the, in the, um, in the chat room, uh, excuse me, the link to her show in the chat room. And one of those certain people picked it up and then porn bombed her. So yeah, never put it's a rookie mistake, and you hate to see you it. Hate to see it. it don't put your freaking link. You're look. This is in Canada, all right. Mm -hmm. People will torture you if they grab that link, you know, because at that point they take over your your uh, your hangout and they can put anything they want on. Yeah, I, and, and it just was a shame because Nicole's such a such a like sweet, but not sweet. Sweet sounds. She's such a straight shooter, such a nice right. person, such right. a cool person that um. And not that you wish that on anybody, the porn bombing thing, but no, it's you unexpected. Don't. Why would you do that to Nicole? It's just like, well, why no, would you do it? Why would you do it? They, they're equal opportunity bombers. Yeah, yeah, They'll do it to I, anybody. 
Yeah. And if if it isn't porn, they'll put an NFL game or some copyrighted. Well, oh, I heard game. that that I've heard that that's happened. I think that once happened though accidentally. Accidentally, I'm but though sure. there's there's an assortment of different things you can put in a channel that'll get Don't you. Don't give smacked. these people any ideas. Well, no, I mean p porn's about the easiest Let's one. Let's give because, these people this idea: look into flat Earth. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> real quick, because people will say, well, why would you porn bomb them? It's because YouTube, oh, yeah. you uh, you get an immediate copyright strike. Well, no, immediate, I'm sorry, it's a different strike. It's a porn community strike. Guideline strike community, porn community strike. guideline strike. Well, I think and, what they do is they put the porn in and they're, they're like, all these guys are in on it. They find the link, they they, they go, they take over, it. put the porn, and then they report it immediately. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then YouTube immediately records it, and sure enough, you know, yeah. they're... It's, and but it didn't take away her channel just that video was gone because she didn't have any other strikes i don't know if her live stream status was taken away but i but no she I, did a short live stream afterward oh good, talking good, about good it. for her good for yeah. her i think she i doesn't, commented she doesn't deserve bad things she's a very nice no person. that's what i'm trying to say that is this, this is what i'm trying to say she's no one deserves bad things yeah. um speaking of people who don't deserve bad things the whole talk about there's lots show. of people that deserve bad things holy okay. smokes you're gonna gloss over well, that well yeah, a few. But but I don't I don't generally do it myself. Karma will take care. Karma will do it for <laughs> me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, the Hori Sheets show is somebody who doesn't deserve bad things, and he's going through a lot emotionally right now. And I'm not speaking out of school or however that expression goes, because he's made several somewhat of a lot of videos about it and or Facebook posts about it. So he's in our live chat, wishing him the best on his journey in life. So the Hori Sheet show, check it out. What else is happening? What else is happening in here? Um, Bob of Globusters is is saying what I think too. Is it time for the conference yet? I'm getting itchy for it, you know? Yeah, but um, we got a whole nother conference before that conference. Well, you've got the one in Edmonton, yeah, and then we've got yeah. the one in Denver. But it I want it to be now, I guess, because when we when I met up with you in Toronto and right. I'm around all the flat earthers, Tommy and 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 uh, you know scuba dracula and, and uh everybody else who who came that i've mentioned earlier it was just a great feeling you know like it always is when you meet up with flat earthers and i want that feeling again and a conference is that on steroids so right uh, and once again we don't get paid to i was a conference I was, or i was, I was jealous that I, w I wouldn't didn't go to the sacramento meetup oh yeah uh, that looked like a really fun meetup um, Candy from Ice by NASA Lies is here. I thought it was her earlier that said NASA Lies, but that's somebody different. So hello, Candy. candy. And candy. can't can't place the face on that candy. Do we know her? Uh no. Yeah. Yeah. Um Bob of Globuster says, Are you and Mark going to Banff after the Edmonton conference with us? I guess we are. I didn't know what's, about it. What's happening in I Bam? think that's where they lure you out there and then you wind up in the back of a fish. Never Chevy. let them take you to a second location, kids. Yeah, I think that's bad hostage is so 101. Mark's going, I'm not. I'll just be nice and comfy in the hotel. I don't I don't know anything about it. Uh, it's gonna be something cool if Bob's inviting um and talking uh, about it. So maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. I don't I don't ski if if that's what you're talking, because I know Banff is big on skiing. I wanna but... do it. I've uh, cross country skied before. I have some pretty killer ski outfits, but I don't know how shocking. to ski. <laughs> Absolutely shocking that you have killer ski outfits. Well, there's this movie with Audrey Hepburn in it, and it's called Charade, and it's one of my favorite movies. And Audrey Hepburn, one of my favorite actresses. And um, anyway, she had a cool ski outfit in it. And a long time ago, it, it was one of those things I thought was great to go skiing or just even so you got a ski out, outfit. You know, several of them just to hang out at a, a ski chalet and with a mug of cocoa. <laughs> But that's it, just but, Coco. But this is He's August. Drinking and skiing. This is August in Edmonton. I don't know if they're skiing. I don't know. And, we'll find out. Unless we'll, they have like we'll, machines I'll, that make the snow. No idea. I'll uh, we'll start. I'll start thinking about my stuff. Uh, I think at the end of this month, maybe June. We I mentioned Lenny from Canada, who's in the chat, and um, I know him because he did a very touching video on his mom that just somehow. I don't even know how I saw it. I wasn't subbed to his channel, but at that time, and it was about his mother and her death and just how much she meant to him. Anyway, so he's in our live chat and it occasionally comes from time to time. I was expecting Lenny from Canada might be at our meetup in Toronto. So hopefully he will attend the Edmonton Flat Earth Conference, but he's not a flat earther, but he's here hanging with us. So he's flat earth curious, maybe Lenny? Or Is it flat earth curious or flat curious? I'd like flat earth curious because uh, flat, flat curious m just might mean you have a 
taste for things that are flat, you know. All right. Yeah, flat Earth curious. All right. Uh, Lanny says he couldn't come. Oh, okay. So what about Edmonton? I'm just having a whole show where I'm just talking to Lanny in the chat. <laughs> it's a whole show now. <laughs> What else? Um, well, it's funny because I'm just talking to somebody in the chat, which isn't very engaging because you're here with me and there's a ton of other people watching. By Hello way, to the, DITRH, by the way, who just joined us. The Toronto customs side when we were going into Toronto was amazing, blindingly fast, extremely efficient. Oh, yes. The American side coming back yeah, fr was from Toronto better. was nightmarish. Well, it depends. Houston International Airport, which I, uh, George Bush Airport, I think. And it's, they don't even call it the International. They call it the Houston Intercontinental Airport for some reason, right. George Bush. Um, it's a huge place, like those sorts of airports are. And it, it was just a lot of people. It all depends how many planes land at that time and then the line that comes following that. So yeah. what else is happening? Um, Robert Wiggles says, good old pancake butt. Yeah, I don't know if you're talking about me, but my butt's not that Pancake big, so. butt? I don't know. Is it an insult? But fine. I'm kind of Caucasian and don't really have a big butt. Sorry. Gee, that bothers yeah, you. Your butt is white as they get. Sorry. I have right. a little curve. A little tiny curve, but not much more than that. Robert Wiggles is saying flat curious. <laughs> I think there was a Carl's Jr. ran a commercial called Flat Buns. I think I sent it to you. Flat buns. I like flat buns. They, they did a whole, it was kind of like a hot for teacher thing, the Van Halen yeah, thing. Only the, a lot of people don't know about that fat fast food chain. I first ran across it in Carl's California, Jr. Carl's Jr. It's not here in Texas, or at least where I live. I want to say hi to Ran of the channel Flat Out Elected. He's here. Uh, DITRH says he's got to go land the drone back in a few. So he just. <laughs> He just puts a drone up and then just goes inside and goes on YouTube and says hi and then goes outside and the drone's just flying. You know, that of you saying, I got to go land the drone, that's a sound clip waiting to yeah. happen. Yeah, this is why we can't have nice things. Exactly. <laughs> the drone just crashes into someone. Uh, Flat Earth Head is talking about the meetup in NOLA. Flat Earth Head, I mentioned your meetup earlier on in the show. So um, it is the 12th in Mandeville, I think I said so. Give me a thumbs up if that's indeed. And I have to mention to Jamie Brown, yes, I will do the meetup because he's doing meetups all the time in, uh, oh boy, where is he? It's in England. I'll just give Heaton, it that. Heaton, Heaton, Heaton Park, Manchester. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I will get to his trailer. There's no hurry. He always sends them to me way in advance, and it's great. That's good. That's advance, compared to people that send it to me 48 hours. Oh, before and they say, can you make me something? Well, you know what? Everybody relies on uncle mark to do these things uh, i won't be able to do these forever just so you know well no the thing is is that you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart and you're um a lot of people just take it for granted that you're doing it but the thing is is that and they all thank you for doing it but they do I, what i'm trying to say is it's really cool that you do that well i thank give you, you know if us. i if uh, i I give too much. That's really if, if, if people say, Mark, do you have flaws? It's like, yeah, I, I, I give too much. That's it. Isn't that one of those things when people go to interviews, they'll say, yeah, that's what you're supposed to say. What is your weakness? And you'll say, I'm just a little bit of a perfectionist. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah if I'm, I were I'm, a person and I were interviewing people and they said that, I would say, get out. There's the door. You're I'm a liar. <laughs> too oriented. Yeah, too detail oriented. I care too much about my fellow man. I care too much. I'm too okay. empathetic. <laughs> Just too honest. Like um, right now, I'm thinking about getting you coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Uh, flat out elected. Rand says he's considering a meetup in the Dominican with lots of ocean and mountains for experimenting and incredibly beautiful. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I, I, I like just, how you just said that. Oh, it was very like, oh. Oh. <laughs> So, you know, you have been transvestigated to totally be a Jewish woman. So is that I a mean, Jewish woman coming out, Patricia. I have something important to discuss with you. The uh, no, that's that's no, that's me doing the whole strange world thing. Hmm. Uh, there was a guy, there is a New Zealand flat earth conference that is happening, and I am Skyping into it. Or zooming into it using Zoom, whatever technology. It's basically we call it Skype. Uh, so I am going to be on a screen talking to the crowd, and we're doing a test for that tomorrow afternoon. 
And I think it's going to be on the 19th of May in New Zealand. So anyone down in New Zealand, they know what's going on down there. They, they contacted me a little while ago and they said, hey, how would you like to do? I'm not going to do a presentation. I, it, I, if you want to see a, a presentation, you can just watch YouTube videos. The, it's better for me. You know, it always is more real if, if, I, if there's back and forth, which is why I, you know, I do what I do at the conferences and, and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do there i'm anyone that's down in new zealand look it up i don't have much information on this conference thing that's happening down there but it's flat earth conference but well, if you're interested yeah. shoot me an email and i'll i just it. looked something up i just put flat earth new zealand conference yeah. okay and what came up was something from 2017 that says flat earth international conference and this uh, one and they talk about Raleigh, North Carolina. So I can't find something that talks about the actual event. That well, if doing. you're interested, if, if you're down in New Zealand, if you're listening or whatever, send me an email and say, hey, I want to know about the New Zealand conference. And I will send you the, the email address of the person that's organizing it. The New Zealand Herald picked up on that story that says Flat Earthers' latest conspiracy involves Australia, not uh, Whatever. Which... which I, I was asked, I think I mentioned at the start of the show by a friend of mine who's not a flat earther, but knows I am that uh, what's up with that. And don't you think that people saying that is going to turn people off to this whole thing that you're into? And I said, I have no idea who said it. I kind of bet no one really did that. They might've heard us say, uh, people aren't upside down in New Zealand. Ha 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 about that. And then right. the news people extrapolated from that to say they don't believe there's New Zealand, excuse me, Australia. Um, oh, right, right. Yeah, that, that'd be that could be it. it because I still have not known who said if anyone ever did say that there is flat earth believe there's flat earthers believe there's no such thing as Australia. Right. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Chris Hatfield, say, that's the other guy. Yes, Chris Hatfield. Correct. People are like, what are you talking about? Chris earlier Hatfield. couldn't Chris remember Hatfield, the guy's name yeah the, that's the uh, canadian astronaut that mm -hmm. needs to get into a vacuum chamber with me mm -hmm. they and all do set. they all need to get into a vacuum chamber with that get into a vacuum chamber with me throw the lever tell me how it works and i can here's the here's why they can't do it the, there's three very very easy ways to prove a vacuum chamber i mean simple anybody has the resources to do this one is of course take a, a balloon or a latex glove and put a little bit of air in it that 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 glove or balloon will blow up really, really quickly because the air is trying to get out. The second is test would be water because just regular old tap water. Uh, anyone knows this if you're uh, doing baking or cooking at high altitudes, the, the the boiling temperature gets lower and lower and lower as you get higher and higher. To where you're, if you're in a vacuum, water just boils on its own. It just boils. It's it's not like it's generating heat or anything. It's just literally evaporating, super super quickly. And the third thing is that in a vacuum chamber, there's no sound. Mm -hmm. So you could take. So if in a your, tree falls, mm, no, a little different. Um, no sound, as in you take in and you know a bell works as soon as you pull the air out of it. The bell doesn't do anything because it's like ripples in a pond. You throw a rock in, you see ripples. But if there's no pond, you throw a rock in nothing happens because there's nothing to can, you know, nothing to take that energy anywhere. So what I'm saying is it's so easy to prove you, you, they can't, you can't fake a vacuum chamber. I mean, yeah, you could put somebody in a room and then say, Oh, it's a vacuum. <laughs> it's like, you could do that, but it's like, no, no, anyone knows any science is not going to, they're not going to buy it. All right. I just was sent something. What? Um, I have to read it. And it's a screenshot of something that says somebody named Shelly Floyd, Flo no, Shelly Floyd, F-L-O-R-Y-D, I've never heard of this person, made a post on Facebook. And this is what news media picked up on with the whole uh, flat earthers believe Australia isn't real. And this is what this person wrote on Facebook. According to this article, maybe they didn't even really happen. Right. Okay, ready? Right. Australia is not real. It's a hoax made for us to believe that the British moved over their criminals to some place. In reality, all these criminals were loaded off the ships into the waters, drowning before they could see land ever again. It's a cover-up for one of the greatest mass murders in history, made by one of those pro most prominent empires. Australia does not exist. All things you call proof are actually well-fabricated lies, blah, blah, blah. Then this person continues. If you think you've ever been to Australia, Australia, you are terribly wrong. Australia is one of the biggest hoaxes ever created. Tell the truth. Stand up for what is right. Stand up for the ones who died. Let it be known that Australia doesn't exist. Hashtag Australia's not real. Now, to me, 
This reads like somebody making a joke and they put it on their Facebook, making fun of conspiracy theorists. And perhaps if this indeed was on Facebook and it made it to this news article, right. news people picked up on it and acted like this was a real flat earther say, saying this story. I skim read the article if anybody has ever seen it. It's, uh, it was too uh, it's an interesting article. So obviously it wasn't a flat earther that we know who said this. It's a spoof article. And then somebody and ran with it. Somebody ran with it. Gosh, what is it? The War of the Worlds or something? I mean, somewhat similar. War of the Worlds, Orson Welles, mm -hmm. famous radio broadcast. So, which, by the way, got him. If you, good things come out of weird things. You know, he was the one that did the broadcast. But because the producers in Hollywood thought it was so groundbreaking, they gave him the only time in history complete creative control and allowed him to make what is now known as the greatest filmed movie of all time. Citizen Kane. Oh, yes. And he wrote, starred, directed, produced the whole nine yards. No one ever since has ever been able to do that. Yeah, right. It, it is. Really? I don't know. That there is this, somebody else who's done that. And I, can't I don't know where this wisdom comes from. Mm -hmm. Is it sage like? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Arwen says anything to ridicule flat earth will be picked up by the media. And yes. Christopher said that uh, sarcasm or satire is never picked up by the media. So um, Brian Stavely says that Australia thing has been going around for like a year now. Interesting. But you know what? The, the sad There's, part is the guy that I know, the ex-boyfriend, he was from Scotland, lives in Houston, told me via message that he heard about that flat earthers don't believe there's Australia. So therefore, those sorts of pieces of satire that people might put on their Facebook that the mainstream media can get a hold of do us nothing but harm. So the don't grapevine do it. Don't do it, kids. still don't exist. Do it. Yeah. You know, my cousin's brother's former roommate told mm -hmm. me that he knew a guy. Mm -hmm. that, you know, like, what? Uh, in fact, that was done with me. It's uh, been done with me. I mean, remember, geez, remember when, the things I'm, the people say I am. When, remember the, when the most recent one is pregnant. So, okay. When, when I was supposed to be DOD and somebody. Call somebody said they taught from yes. Oregon said yes. they called me and I told them this and it's like by the time I got to like three or four degrees I've of separation seen this screenshot of that where yeah. somebody writes somebody I know talk called Mark Sargent and Mark Sargent right. told them he was DOD they use that as the proof that you're DOD right uh yeah it's like yeah you heard from a guy that, oh yeah also there is the Another one that somebody, somebody, I won't mention who, says that I said you were gay. And right. the proof is the person saying, Patricia told me Mark was gay. There's never any proof of me saying it, but there's a bunch of things like that. Oh, another one is uh, Patricia said, I'm not a flat earther. It's a fun sandbox to play in. It, right. There's no soundbite or anything written that I ever said it, but somebody said I said it. And then a number of people use that as proof. So yeah. in a truth community, when you're, you're getting proof like third hand where you, you think that's proof, boy, the, we are the old, screwed. The old internet rules, though, still apply. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows them. That is, if you don't have audio or you don't have video, you don't have nothing. Yeah. So whatever. Because right? Photoshop is that's easy to do, and sure. people can fake just about any other thing they want. But audio and video, that's still the currency. And Brian Staley says, Yeah, if someone was a show, they're going to admit it on a phone call to a random exactly. Person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what. We, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. And yeah, um, a, tra flat a trained Oregon. operative is going yeah. to give it all up, right. I've been in this for years, but let me tell you right now. Yeah, I like your <laughs> face. I like the cut of your jib. Well, I've never actually seen your face or the cut of your jib. It's only a disembodied voice on the phone, but let me tell you about the DOD. Okay. Yeah. I just don't care anymore. Mm. Uh, We've got Matt hate. Long in, in, in the chat, and um, Carly Sunshine says, they never have proof, just word salad. And Matt Long answers, I'm on a diet. Word salad sounds good. That's so, funny. <laughs> that's funny. Is oh my god, that's the title of a book right there. Uh, is word salad fattening? Holy smokes! Somebody got it. What would it that. be? Would it be a book about narcissists, or would it be a book about cooking, or diets, or all three? Mm -hmm. Narcissists who make I don't know, but now I'm recipes getting, now I'm on hungry. diets. How much, how much longer do we have in the show? Seriously, I'm starving. 
I'm kind of hungry myself too. Right. Um, Is there anything we haven't else? talked about? I don't know. I think we've talked about everything we were going to talk about, right? Why? Uh, that's interesting. And yet somewhat slow. Oh it's yeah. Suck, the Hawaii uh, volcanoes. True. Vol um, volcanoes are like, if you have the equivalent of monsters, they'd be like the mummy. Kind right. of interesting, but really slow. Well, it is destroying beautiful homes. It's creating new land. I guess that's kind of cool. I, look, you, you, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't have that much sympathy because, I don't know, I read history. So let's well, talk. You, what are you going to say? They should move? Don't live in paradise? Yeah. <laughs> That, uh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? You know, maybe you should you should ask the residents of uh, Vesuvius. Okay. No, no, um, no, no. You should ask the residents of Krakatoa. What about no, Texas, no. Houston? There was a big uh, um, hurricane here, or New Orleans, where I lived before. There was a Hurricane Katrina. You just don't know where tragedy no, will strike. Or the dice, you take your chances. Everywhere has a, an element where things could occur. And even of if course. it's not an earthquake or a firestorm or a lava, I mean, you could have like a robbery the, or. The, remember 1980, um, people that were living next to Mount St. Helens, the only continental United States volcano that, that blew its top. And there were still people living on the mountain. It's like, nah, 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 I'm just I'm born on this mountain. I'm going to die on this mountain. Marty Leeds recently just moved and he's, kind of right smack dab in the middle oh, he's of the living hole. in hawaii yeah uh-huh and a uh, bunch uh, of flat earthers uh, live in hawaii like jo uh joey rosha but he wasn't in the, the danger area i mean hawaii's got islands in different areas so um it's not i mean like hey we love living here it's paradise and all those sudden whoosh, ah, you know the, well, yeah, but it's really, really slow motion. It's not like the movies. That's why the media is over there. It's like, yeah, it's they like want... I'm going to stroll away from the lava. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, seriously, the, you set up your camera. It's like, hey, let's go get lunch, uh, mm -hmm. get their brakes done on our car, manicure. do our taxes, <laughs> you know, come back. And, and then it's like, huh. But there that... are fissures and that open up and then it's oh, beautiful. Sure, sure. And there's some good shots. I mean, lava is beautiful too. All lava is lava. fascinating. Yeah. Lava's like a woman, beautiful and deadly. <laughs> All right, we're going to end on that. <laughs> I think we are. Yeah, probably. <sighs> so, how's it? So, uh, to, to reiterate, do not download the bootleg copy. Don't live in a tornado prone area. <laughs> you uh, don't want to die in a tornado. And uh, yeah, don't enjoy take it. Wooden nickels, kids. <laughs> enjoy it. Hugs, not drugs. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, don't enjoy everybody. Everybody, enjoy your meetups that are coming up. Mm -hmm. This this and we'll you and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so. please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to Mark. Subscribe to your host. Channel. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one thing. I I'm sorry. This oh. I want to end with this. I want to end with this, and then you can yes. do your whole closing thing. I was thinking about because people, I you know, I was I was saying I'm the the tour guide of Flat Earth. You know, Flat Earth University. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm the world. interviewer of Flat Earth. We have our roles. Yet, uh, but but the university thing is is not formal. I was thinking of sort of an informal thing for you. You know what it is? Mm. I thought of it. You're the mm. flat earth. Ho if if flat earth was a restaurant, yes, you'd be the hostess. So you'd I will greet you at the door. Greet you at the door, and, and then would say, you like to sit? <laughs> exactly. There's this table over here with such and such. There's you know here. I could put you here. Put you. It it you you are the 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 really classy liaison to the flat Thank earth you. restaurant. Yeah. When, um, the restaurant is the menu of a lot of people I've interviewed. So that's a yeah. nice way to put it. Yeah. I haven't interviewed everyone, but I've interviewed a lot of people yeah. with different perspectives, different models, different views. Some of the people are no longer in Flat Earth and some are, yeah. some are whole different people than they were when I first interviewed them. Well, they them. left the restaurant or they're outside smoking a cigarette or something. A couple of them choked on a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> some of them I wish did, but, you know, life goes on. And then the Tiger Dan was, was the uh, dine and dash that we still don't know. Okay. Yeah, I know. He had a big meal and then just I just looked over at his table and there was nothing there, there but a crumpled napkin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Um, have fun on Flat Earth. Enjoy your stay here because it is very short with things that occur in the news. You know, like we know no one's died uh, so far anyway in Hawaii, but you just never know when something bad might occur. So enjoy the good feelings that you have with your friends and family and with our friends that we've made here on the Flat Earth. And until we meet again, and we shall, Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent saying, keep it flat. Long live Flat Earth. <laughs>